All right, what's up, everybody? How's everybody doing so far? We are finally, hopefully, live. All right, we are hopefully live again this time. Hopefully, no. Hopefully, no craziness. Can everybody see me? Then that's the next question. Hold on. Yes, I am live. Let's see. Can everybody see me? I'm trying to. There we go. All right, all right. All right. Uh, on. All right. So now I'm gonna try again. All right. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? Um, suffering some technical difficulties. All right, so technical difficulties, but this time we're here. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I think this time we should be good. Uh, technical difficulties. So hopefully this time we're good. We're good this time. Hopefully hopefully nothing too insane goes on. No more technical difficulties. But welcome to the stream, everybody. You know, how's everybody doing today? Um, you know, we're finally here. It's finally it's finally it. Uh but but hope you all hope you're all enjoying your weekend. But this time, um, we're here to live stream react the USFL Stands versus against the USFL Showboats, and and I'm gonna bring in my guest for this stream. Uh, allow me to introduce uh, Tea Time Reports. But the guest we're gonna bring in today is Trevor Basso. Um, we're gonna bring him right now. And there we are. How you doing, man? How you doing good. today? How about yourself? Thank you for having me. Uh, you're welcome. We're I'm doing good. Uh, we're finally, finally, technical, after technical difficulties, we're good, ready to roll, ready to see some stallions. Hopefully, they win today. So the, the let's crowd just see. looks good. Crowd looks good. All right, not bad. Uh, you know, we just saw Luke Miller's post. He saw the goat himself. Took a picture next to him. So. Hey. Check the shirt. Peep the shirt. McGiddy up. Perfect. Perfect yes. setting. Perfect yes. occasion. Right there. Yes. He cut the hair, though. <laughs> he did cut the hair. I was, like, confused for a second. I was like, I didn't recognize him <laughs> until I had to see his face. Like, oh, it is him. No, it, it definitely threw me off a little bit. But I'm excited, yeah. man. This is going to yeah. be a huge game. Huge game. Yeah. His time in Green Bay, I guess he changed a bit. He changed his bit of time in Green Bay. So, uh, they probably had to give him the more of the Midwestern, that Midwestern look, you know? <laughs> yeah, but. for sure. Rocking the stash, I like it. But, mm -hmm. man, I miss Alex McGee. The banner's about to drop, though, so. Yeah, all right. Awesome. Finally going to put on the UFL game right now, at least on my phone. All right, here we are. All right, I see Scooby right, right there. And I see them trying to perform the national anthem, it looks like. I might yeah. be a 
little either behind you then or ahead of you. Yeah, I'm behind you a little bit. That's yeah. Okay, I might have to fast forward. I'm on Hulu TV. Oh, I'm on. Uh, right. Yeah, I'm on Spectrum. I thought I was gonna. I thought I was gonna be behind since it's on Spectrum streaming, not on. Uh, not on uh, cable? the actual cable. Yeah, not yeah. on actual cable. So, but. Finally, the US of the USFL champions are finally home for the first time in this season. We got no. like this. Sorry, go ahead. You got, uh, the Michigan Panthers were able to get three home games. We had to go to the road twice. Well, I guess one of them was facing Michigan, but hey, we won those two games. Hopefully, Adrian Martinez and Matt Corral put up a good performance tonight. You know, or the offense has not been the best, but, you know, it's not been terrible either. But our defense, you know, they've been bend and don't break, and we have seen it so far. I will say this. I've covered – I covered the USFL for its two seasons. I, I love spring ball out of all the clubs that I've seen play. I have no – significance to Alabama, but the greatness I see in the Stallions organization with Zachary Potter, with Skip Holtz, and, you know, just seeing it come into fruition in this new entity like the UFL, it's a huge deal. And like you said, week three, finally get our home opener here. Uh, I couldn't be more excited. Yep, and I see Case Cook is. I see, like, everyone just showing the camera so different set of players. I see Adrian Martinez looking like he's warming up right now. So we'll see how that goes. Were you, so, were you surprised by that? Uh, I, by the... I I I was. Uh, I think everyone was pretty much shocked because I think uh, after last week's game versus the Michigan Panthers, I think we kind of just saw the uh, we saw like oh, there's a bit of a not like a quarterback controversy, more just like okay, there's still a little bit of struggles in the QB room. But yeah. to me, I kind of expected it, like because again, these two are very much rookies in the UFL. Like even Matt Corral, yes, he spent time with the Carolina Panthers, but he only had preseason reps. We never got to see him like start one game in Carolina because you yeah, the injury and then Bryce Young right after. So I'm thinking it's like all right, they're probably new to the UFL, especially since how with the whole merger, like we, ha um, every player improved on talent, every team improved on talent in some sure. way, shape or form. So we're going to see how he does at quarterback one for a few drives. Uh, hopefully he does well because, you know, I'll, you know, uh, if you were there last Sunday on X, uh, spaces with Luke Miller, um, you know, we were, we were all talking about the, uh, QB and what was, and what everyone thoughts were. So, but uh, were you shocked by it? I, I was a little surprised. Um, I know Adrian Martinez is the second leading rusher in the league right now, which is good. But, you know, when it came to passing, I haven't seen anything that showed me that he's better than Matt Corral. But maybe there's an edge that he's going to offer at the start of this game. I know Skip Holtz likes to swap in and out. But as long as Skip Holtz is on the sideline, man, I trust it. I trust his judgment. Um, mm -hmm. I just was a little surprised that, you know, we haven't seen JMR yet, man. I still think that if they're looking for consistency and knowledge on the offense, if they ever really need to resort to a last option, I think he's a instant plug and play type of guy. Um, and, you know, maybe sometime soon we'll see him if they can't figure it out with these two guys. But I, I think we'll get into rhythm here. This is a big game um, when it comes to obviously, you know, interconference matchups. But mm -hmm. I, I think the, the outlier here is how well will, will the sound perform at home in front of their home crowd? They got to draw. Um, they got to make a stand here and make a statement. Um, and honestly, Memphis mm -hmm. does need to rebound as well after last week's shocking loss. Uh, so it's going to be, I feel, I feel like it's going to be a lot closer than we all think, but I, I'm expecting something really exciting here. Yeah. Mark Gilbert is actually going to be out for this game. So we're going to see how the Stanley's deep, how Stanley secondary is going to handle that. I feel like I'm still confident enough to see, but who knows? Case Cookus might probably in the beginning beginning of the game might put up a few good plays like we saw with week one with Luis Perez. So yeah. who knows what happens there? But I'm thinking in my mind, maybe Adrian Martinez is starting because he carries a similar quarterback uh, style we saw back in 2023. So and, you know, since uh, a Sir Alex Magoo is right there, so maybe there's some reason behind it. We're going to get to see how. He does, and it looks like the Stallions are going to – it looks like the – sorry, the Showboats will get the ball in the first half, it looks like. 
which that's definitely one thing they do do well is control the time of possession. We've seen it in the past two weeks that they dominate the clock. They run the ball. Darius Victor turned up a little bit last week. So honestly, do do I think that they're going to do real damage? When I looked at the Stallions defense last week, do I think Michigan Pan- the Michigan Panthers offense is a little subpar? Yes, so it's not really the best example. But the Stallions off- defense, man, they they really have ballers in the front seven. Yeah. It's going to make any team, you know, it's going to have a they're, they're going to have a challenge to run the ball. And today, you know, if Case Cookies can't get that, you know, alleviation of stress yeah. off of him with a rush attack, then it's going to be a one sided affair. But you know, John DeLafitte is a good coach. He he's coming to yeah. win this. Yeah, he, he ha- we have experience with him last season. And I when I saw the showboats, I think when the showboats like got their roster back in January and uh, throughout the dispersal drafts, I honestly thought this was the definition of revenge squad. You had John DeFilippo, who got smacked in the USFL South Championship game, 47-22. Yeah. to You got Case Cookus, who's a... <laughs> we, saw who, we saw what happened in the USFL Championship game. And pretty much every other New Orleans Breakers, and especially other Showboats too, especially what happened last year with Week Two. So, and but we're gonna see the Showboats start off in a minute. And let's begin. Chris Bullock kicks it off, and here we go. Let's get it. <clears throat> this is honestly my game of the week, but people are saying the Brahmas game tomorrow. But I'm also excited to see Mark Thompson back. So there's a lot of big headlines for Week Three in the UFL season for sure. Yeah, and so we have Case Cook is showing his stats. Wow, I'm kind of shocked at his stats right now. But then again, week one, he faced against a, a very good Houston front seven. I was expecting that for sure. And then week two, going against the uh, Brahmas, who they were almost, they had that, they were dominating that whole game. But yeah. at the end, they just um, they just choked a 16-point lead right there and scored 20 on un- and the Brahmas scored 20 unanswered. And honestly, that's got to come down to coaching. Uh, John DeLaFipio, I don't think he's going to yeah. let that happen again. You see the passion that he brings to the sideline. Definitely yeah. um, one of the premier head coaches in this league. He cares about the players, cares about the product he puts on the field. Ooh. I also do want to say I do apologize for any background noise. There is UFC 300 on. Got yeah, some people over. and we got a sack by number 50 himself already in the first play. So Nice. And they're running at Darius Victor. And boom, defense just stuffed. Another by DeAndre Tillman and DeMarcus Gates. Big plays back-to-back here. Third down I mean, here. This is... It starts in the trenches. And that, that O-line is not looking like they're getting any kind mm-hmm. of edge or getting any kind of push. So, and then a little draw play on second and 13. It's just, that that's not the best play call. Yeah. Third down and long. Here we go. Case Cook is, let's see, this is first time since week eight to, since he faced the Stallion. So, uh, here we go. All right. Case Cook is trying to sit. And another sack. Wow. Wow. By by number 50, once again, two sacks today. And, and already plays. on the first drive. Yep. Wow. And, and you so blame, you can't blame Case there. He has no help. There's no yeah help that O line like especially even last season when he was on the stars, you saw uh, he was pretty much getting killed right there every game. So this is pretty much a common theme for him. He's getting he's getting Russell Wilson pretty much. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, I, and hey, let's keep an eye on Case because last week he did exit the game for a play. Troy Williams came in. So he he did get a little banged up last week. He's a tough warrior. He'll come back in if he needs to, but they gotta keep they gotta protect him, man. He's a premier passer. Mm -hmm. They gotta start protecting their their quarterback. Yeah. Like I thought, like if for one thing during his offseason, I thought their old line was going to improve, but uh, I guess right now they're just kind of lackluster, which I get defense is gonna get easily adjusted, but for right if you're getting your quarter your star quarterback getting killed right at this early stage, uh Pretty big risk, but here we go. Adrian Martinez will get his first drive of the season and hopefully does well. Hopefully, maybe, maybe this is kind of solidifies the entire the entire quarterback competition because that's how I treated that's how I was treating these like past two weeks as more of a QB competition than anything since you oh, know really? practice is different from the real life. Here no, we I- go. Adrian Martinez with the screen pass and a uh, deflect. 
It's an interesting perspective you have there with the first two weeks kind of being like a trial and error run. I, I agree with that because Skip Boltz is known to do that and look at the past two years. But Adrian Martinez definitely, I feel like, has more athleticism and more mobility. But Matt Corral is definitely the better passer. I just want to see um, if Adrian Martinez hones in on those skills. Yeah. I was there was putting uh Case Cook is on the bench like they saw Case Cook is on the bench sitting there. I thought it was like it looked like medic medics for a second, but no, he's just on his uh he's on his tablet just looking looking at the plays. And another incomplete. It's not starting out too hot. Yeah. I mean I mean again, these defenses are very were these are very solid defenses, so oh, it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be a grinding fest, especially last week. I expected a grind fest, and this what, and that what happened right there. The only thing, the only thing I saw that that game could have been a blowout if we just had a red zone on click, but no, that game was just uh, Michigan was just on it. And you brought up a good point there. These te- these two teams have really good defenses. I think that's for the entire USFL conference as a whole. Uh, the XFL is able to score a lot on each other. And the USFL, it's more gritty games, a lot, lot more hard-nosed football. A guy yeah. to look out for on the D-line for Memphis is John Atkins Sr. He is a menace to society. Keep your eye out on him. Yep, and Case and Adrian Martinez threw a completed pass to Mr. to Mr. Sternberger himself. Nice. So safe. I mean, he's a safe option. You you I, I trust you trust him every time. When if he's open, you gotta get him. You, it's honestly between him and Cody Latimer for tight end one in the league for me. Mm-hmm. Here we go. All right. And we got a game for you. And we got a flag. First flag of the pl- of the game. In and it's right, on a, Go ahead. And it's on the defense? Yeah, it looked like offsides. Yeah, that's what yeah, ref the ref said, yeah. But I will say this, that you, you you did make a good point earlier talking about how there was a lot of former New Orleans breakers on this defensive unit here for the Memphis Showboats, Neville Clark, uh, Larry Elder, a lot of really good players. Mhm. At least, like, what I like about week one, at least the most, was definitely kind of a kind of like a simmer down on the whole USFL being far behind than the XFL. Because when I was just thinking about them, like, I seen both of these, I seen some of these players go from both leagues, and I'm still questioning, like, how are, how is the talent gap like very wide? I need to understand it. So, but when going to this game, I'm like, all right, that's great. I need it just yeah. just to kind of simmer down. It it definitely – that conversation I feel like has, like you said, simmered down. Um, it's always good to have a rivalry between the conferences, but when yeah. it, breaking down the leagues, I mean, they both did great things in their own way. Um, yeah. And combined, I mean, look what we're getting, you know. It's premier yeah. springtime football. And hopefully it still continues on for the next few seasons and, and so forth. So – because you know we because you know we already have seen this past in the 2020 specifically throughout every spring league like they either been one they're pretty much been overall one and done or at least oh a few seasons and like all right we're cutting we're cutting it out yeah just just being just hopefully it establishes itself in springtime yeah. you know amongst the other sports oh. that it does play oh oh shoot go go ah. big play here big play yep First and ten, Martinez with the legs. He's dangerous on his feet, man. I mean, he's mobile, and that's something yep. you got to look out for. And it did remind me. Okay, so part of the also with the dual QB system, it reminded me a lot like twenty twenty two New Jersey Generals because where you had Luis Perez uh, being more the passer type of guy, but you get DeAndre Johnson, although he has shown to uh, throw the ball pretty decently, but. But he has been more known, like as like the Lamar Jackson, the mobile type of guy. So when I was looking at this, like that's what it felt like some energy with this, and yeah. hopefully it is a little bit. Be- it goes a little bit better along the way because right now Martinez, although great legs, but passer wise, he still, you still need some, you still need some work done. Yeah, 
there's there's development to be done. And just honestly, it's the consistency. His his completion percentage is always pretty rough up to this point. Maybe he can clean it up here, but it's looking good. Yeah. They're marching. They're marching in. They're finally in the red zone. Hopefully, we are able to get at least get a touchdown within this drive. So, but that wow. was a catch. Yeah, that, that catch. thread number. Uh, is that was that Marble? Yeah. yeah oh, no, no. CJ Marable. Yeah. Awesome. He's he's dangerous as well. He's yeah. leading and rushing, but also just uh, me and my brother, we call him, you know, respectfully to Tyreek Hill. We call him the Tyreek Hill of this week. He is very yeah. useful in all facets of the run game, yeah. as well as out of the backfield. He's he's dangerous. <laughs> I'm not saying that he can run like the cheetah though. Yeah. <laughs> but but hey, you know, he is a Swiss Army knight. He's pretty much a Swiss Army knight for the player. Obviously, oh, unless we see him throw some passes, but <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> maybe. You never know a skip. Yeah. Here we go. Run from him too. Third and one. Hopefully, let's let's get this. Uh, looks like they're yep. Tomorrow, Bell and well, first down. Memphis well, is. They're getting chipped away at on defense here. They gotta mm-hmm. make a play. Yep, because right now I think they're treating this as like, hey, they, this has to be a grind, a slow grind. Get this defense tired up because I think they saw last week that, hey, if we tire up this defense really well early on, then we're basically going to have this game in the bag. So, Especially in the second half, like you said, get them tired and they'll perform like they did against the Brahmas and give up that game. Yeah. Which was crazy how they lost week two. And here we go. They give it to Marbell and... It looks like uh, no gain, no gain for for yardage. Good stop by Memphis. Mm-hmm. I'm just looking at their uniform. I love both of their uniforms, man. I yeah, it's just it's just such a clean look. Yeah. Oh yeah. Speaking of uh, jerseys, if you want to buy a 2023 UFL jerseys on the UFL shop right now, I think it's like for 60 bucks plus tax at the moment. So if you oh, want to wow. go ahead before they start bringing the new jerseys and then after that's going to be costing like maybe like 200 bucks based on XFL prices, then go ahead. This is your opportunity right now. That's very true. And uh, yeah. The prices for the XFL were wild last year. I mean, I kind of understand one perspective where it's like, oh, well, we got to make some money somehow in some way. But at the same time, if you're trying to like to get people excited and hype, then you should not have made it more than an NFL jersey. That's that's I was like very concerned, even like the XFL in 2020. I don't think they were that expensive. I think they're around the uh, the USFL prices for it, maybe even a little bit cheaper. And. I, I want to see. Hopefully, they're not outlandish in the UFL. We haven't yeah. gotten the. Oh! oh! What? Wow! I I thought it was gonna be an overthrown pass. What? What a grab! It did sail. He it just did sail. A he bit. just stood there, like Jay Sermon just stood there, like. He. he oh my gosh. I, I gotta see the high. I gotta see the replay. Wh- oh my okay. gosh! Oh my gosh! That was. I mean, he was definitely the intended target, but but that looked him. like that was gonna be an overthrown <laughs> pat. That was gonna be overthrown. But here we go, uh, Adrian Martinez. Let's see how you do on the. Uh, it looks like they're going for two. I would yeah, go for yeah, two. They're yeah, they're going for two. They're going for two. What a play? Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh oh intercepted well you know I, I mean it's not like an impactful interception but it just, was still a pick still points on the board he's got to be better yeah. than that yeah so i mean is that the worst drive for Adrian martinez but still no. passer wise is still he's still got he's still very rough on the edges there so and so with two- the uh, and two tipped the balls of the line in the row in a row. He's gotta he's gotta get his arm angles right here. He's gotta yeah. get back to his mechanics. But I kind of see the Magooness right there. I see a little bit of the Magoo, just a little bit A, just need to develop it a little more, maybe just give it some time and we'll go on from there. So hopefully hopefully he does better. Yeah. No, but still a touchdown. I mean, other than that t- sloppy two point conversion try, yeah. 
I mean, everything went decent. Like you said, the yeah. passing just has to get more consistent if we're gonna yeah. if they're gonna pull through here. All right, you know, for, oh, go ahead. Uh, first question of the, I guess, since you're you're my guest here, uh, first question. Uh, just tell us about your channel, honestly. That's that's usually kind of that's probably the biggest question right there. Um, well, Tea Time Reports available pretty much everywhere. Uh, we've been doing it a little over a year now, the podcast at least. Um, I've been running the Twitter for over over two years now, um, just talking about spring ball, film, music, just you know stuff that catches our attention that we have you know interest in that we're knowledgeable about and stuff we try and learn about as well as we talk about it or cover it. But we do a lot of sports stuff, obviously, a lot of uh, yeah. springtime football. A lot of NFL mm -hmm. stuff out there, if anyone out there is interested in that. But we're also big fans of football, not American football, but, um, you know, Tampa Bay Rowdies, if you're a Florida yeah. native, <laughs> USL Championship League. We talk a lot about that league. Um, we right. do album reviews, film reviews, but it's pretty much just stuff we want out there in the airways. Like, you know, we don't we don't want certain films or albums forgotten or, you know, we just like talking yeah. about these certain things. It's one of those things that yeah. um, if you have a lot of knowledge on something, you find enjoyment in talking to people about it, finding out new things about it could be anything. I try and learn something new every day, uh, in any kind of capacity, but, uh, yeah, no, if you guys are listening out there or watching, definitely give us, a, give us a little follow or something like that. All support is greatly appreciated. All right. That's pretty, that's pretty good. Like, you know, like I'm just like, you know, yeah, there is like obviously the sports content there, but you know, I do love like how you're kind of more diverse with your diverse with your content. So I can't, you know, I'll probably I'll probably get to see more of the film stuff right now. Obviously, I'm just more listening to the uh, UFL content at the moment. But hey, you know, uh, keep doing what you're doing right there. You know, um, thank you, man. But well, everyone, uh, if you're all listening to this, uh, you know, follow Tea Time Reports. He's on X or slash Twitter, uh, Instagram, uh, Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, uh, whatever whatever platform you could uh, try to find him on. And likewise, give this guy a follow. He puts in a lot of hard work as well. I mean, seriously, thank you for the invite on this. It's my first guest appearance anywhere, so it's pretty awesome. And no problem. And watching the Stallions game, it's even cooler. Yeah, yeah thanks. I, uh, I was just like, you know what? I was trying to, for 2024, I've done you know, a few live streams here and there, but I'm like, all right, I got to I gotta kind of go a little more bigger for 2024. So I'm going to at least try my best whenever at least I'm available for these games or whatever, what time. I'm going to try to at least try to bring more people in, maybe. Uh, and I, and whatever I always ask, like, oh, if anyone wants to come in as a guest, let me know. I I'm just want to be like, hey, you know, I want to, mm, like, you know, see if people want to be interested, see what what's going on there. You know, want, maybe people want to promote their channel. Go ahead. You know, I just want just want to see, especially I want to bring more springtime, spring football content more because, you know, we want to, besides, you know, bring, you know, for – bringing uh promoting for their platform but bring promoting you know spring football in general because you know we have seen some people in the comments saying that we don't care about the league it's all about the nfl even though it should just be like hey it's a league of opportunity uh you know these guys are balling out these guys are still going to work every time like they're and if it's not okay even if they're not going to the nfl they have a place to still play ball like just be happy about it very true. It, like you said, the opportunities are there, um, and they put in equally as much work as a lot of other people out there with with jobs, you know. And to not support it and to not look at it in some kind of positive light, that's just rude. And to the people out there just hating on the league, just to hate. I mean, honestly, shame on you. I guarantee you, you can't name your entire roster of your NFL team, but that's <laughs> neither here nor there. But, you know, to people out there supporting this league, propping it up in any way they can, they're doing much more than just putting content out there. Huge sack on Case, by the way. It looked – Yeah, it looked like that looked brutal. That looked brutal. That looked like some WWE – like he was on like some WWE type. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they need to do what they just did there. Get the ball out of his hands in yeah. two seconds or less to Sage Surratt. He's one of the best tight ends in spring football history, in my personal opinion. Yeah. He's a dog. And – oh, incomplete. Almost, almost could have gotten there. Almost could have hit the thread, but Case looks banged. He kind of looks banged up a bit. No, he, he does. Oh, I feel bad for I, him. I, 
I mean, this man was one like this man is still currently like one of the top quarterbacks in the Spring League era. Like watching him play in 2022, I was just like very impressed by him. And he was currently like the backup at the moment before uh because he was sitting behind uh KJ Costello, if I believe so. Uh Brian and Scott, actually. Brian Scott. But Costello was 2023, right? Or was he there both years? He was there both years. Yeah. But Case, I mean, he has a great story, and he's, like you said, one of the the better passers, one of the better quarterbacks in springtime football. I mean, this is a guy you want to protect and let him throw the ball, but they're not giving him any clean pocket. I mean, yeah. they, they should not even be trying these deep throws with the amount of time that he has. He has no time in the pocket. They need to just simplify this. Give it to Darius Victor. You're not down by a lot. Don't yeah. give up on the rush game. Get your running backs involved. You have Trey Williams as well. You have both of the former New Jersey uh, New Jersey Generals running backs on your team, and they were the number one rush attack in the USFL for two years running. Exactly. So, <laughs> use them. Use those pieces. I'm not understanding the play calling or the personnel utilization by John DeLaFipio here. I always am going to trust Darnell Lake as the D.C. for Memphis, but um, this has just been rough for, for, for Case. He's getting, not like you said, that. banged up. In 2023, you had Wes Hills, one of the top running backs in the U.S. in the USFL. So, how you're not using the same thing with Darius Victor is now that's uh that's probably the most confusing part about this. It is definitely really confusing to tell you the truth. I, I don't understand. <laughs> you have a game plan. Wes Hills was dominant last year, but not using two of your running backs that were a part of a really good system is concerning. Yeah. Um, but I, I can kind of see maybe why they're not. Their O line looks really rough. Maybe they ha they don't have the confidence. But you got to try something out here. Yeah, uh, and something that, something's better than nothing. And it's I, been nothing I, so far. Yeah, I just think of the Seahawks because I am a Seahawks fan. Uh, by the way, I I each time I keep seeing that, I just think of the entirety of the Seahawks offensive line throughout pretty much almost every year, especially during the Russell Wilson era where he just like, I get it. He's a mobile quarterback, but man, that man was, uh, that man was pretty much getting killed almost every game, especially to a certain retired player that he's no longer on the Rams. Thank God. <laughs> Aaron Donald. <laughs> yeah. Don't have to worry about him anymore. <laughs> especially especially week one. If y'all if you remember that's a certain sound bite that happened, uh Aaron Donald pretty much went after Gino and Gino Smith just pretty much just screamed, Oh my god. <laughs> that that's what happened. <laughs> no, I, I remember that. That's infamous. Yeah. That's my reaction as well. Any human's reaction to Aaron Donald yeah. running at them would be. I'm I just feel like that. one step near Aaron Donald, I feel like you. I would just be like kind of shaking for a moment. I'll be like, yeah, this guy's a a, a beast amongst men. I mean, yes. And if he if he Aaron retires, I, I I might I might cry. I might cry a little <laughs> bit. Like I'll be impressed, but it's like. <sighs> For the Seahawks' sake, for your quarterback's sake, up there, yeah, yeah, and Kenneth Walker, who's a really good player. I like the Seahawks. I like what they got going yeah. on up there. I, I just hope Mike McDonald is the is the guy to you know under uh, after Pete Carroll because you know Pete Carroll has done great has done great things for the organization. You know he did bring us winning seasons, but sure. I think we just kind of both felt like it was the uh, it was Those the time, time. yeah. yeah. So, and I, I think he's the right guy. They brought him over from Baltimore. That's a good system. That's an organization that's won games. That's been in big moments, yeah. right? I mean, and, yeah. And they also, and they, Seattle does like to be like very a defense, a more a defensive like team than really anything. So I think bringing in Matt, uh, uh, Mike, Mike McDonald to the team, I think that brings. I feel like it wouldn't really change much in the transition, but. Hey, who knows what happens? Hopefully, our defense kind of at least does better, especially the the run defense because that was just that that was just straight terrible. I I just seen so many games where they were just uh they were just that terrible, and it looked like oh we had a fumble from Adrian Martinez. We got to yeah, he's got to probably come out. Yeah, I think it's probably will it be Matt Corral time? We'll see. Um. Uh, I, That's I mean, not the play you want to dang. Yeah, oh but it looked like he had some. I looked like he was trying to bring something in with his legs as usual. So I'm thinking Memphis is kind of already uh, adjusting to 
Kylie somewhat adjusting. So who knows what happens there? They they set an edge and you know I mean he got the first yeah. down, but he was just trying to be too fancy with it a little bit. That was a good punch out though by Greg Reeves. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Man, they got it. Yeah, Matt Corral. It's, uh, he's definitely coming in now. Yeah, man. I wish Todd Haley was still there. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a win, right? <laughs> that that would be yeah. Because imagine if the Showboats, you know, still went, you know, Showboats merge and they stick with Todd Haley as their head coach. I, I think I would not have been high on the Showboats for this off season, just knowing yeah. they'd be they'd be worse than the Renegades. And yeah, they're, because be like your roster is impress. It's like again, the roster is impressive, but just seeing the, uh, just seeing like okay, who's your head coach is just kind of like all right. It pretty much just downgrades the entire downgrades everything, lowers the average <laughs> for real. Yeah, and Bob Stoops, I, I don't know, like if if they don't win a game this year, and honestly, if they have confidence going into Week Four, I'd be shocked. Um, th- he might not be here next year, to tell you the truth. I. Because I don't know how to gauge the Renegades. Like, like I thought there would be, like, all right. You know, I thought for a team, I was expecting, like, at least the first game, I was expecting it to be a very close one, which it was for the first half. I'm not yeah. saying it wasn't. But, but like, if you were trying to – I thought you were at least going to improve. I thought that game was going to be at least a lot more better. But, yeah, I just don't understand what happened there. And then week two, I get it. You're going to – you're going to St. Louis. You're going against the, uh, you're going against the Battle Hawks. You know that was going to be a tough game out there, and you did. They did their best, so it's not like it's. So I'm not gonna. So it wasn't too bad. But week three, you had a ten point lead going into that game, and then all of a sudden you just choked it that bad. You basically pulled a showboat. Well, ironically, the showboat. So yeah, and I mean they, like you said, they've played well in these games, and they've put up points and kept it close in moments. But just not being able to execute the last two games they've lost in the fourth quarter. I mean, that's coaching. Yeah. That's that's coaching all through and yeah. through. You're, you're losing the chess match. And, you know, and honestly, you're 0-3 now. I, I can safely say their season's done. Like, I think it's done. Like, I, I it may be early, but I don't know, man. Like, they have no wiggle room to lose anything else anymore. Because it seems it's like they even like because the NFL is like, all right, you lose three games, it's not bad. You're still like, hey, we still have a shot in this. Losing yeah. three games in college, obviously you're cooked. There's there's no more, no more. But yeah, like, but the UFL, you losing three games is kind of pretty much is like you got to win every game beyond this point, no matter. No matter what, because we saw with the XFL North, sorry, yeah, the XFL North in 2023, seven wins didn't, uh, one team with seven wins didn't get into the playoffs, and then same thing with the uh, USFL South last year because the Stallions were eight two. Everyone had a better record than the uh, entire USFL North, yeah. and guess what? The Roughnecks and uh, Showboats didn't get to be in the playoffs because obviously. Uh, it's obviously belongs to the first two spots per division. So, oh, we got a ah, we jumped too early. But before that, we yeah, we, uh, there was a a good completion to um, Jay Adams, Surratt, Jonathan Adams, he, oh. who was um, honestly, it's actually cool to to say this. He, there's only been two receivers. I think Darius Shepard broke it last week, but um, yeah. only been up until Darius Shepard potentially only two receivers to reach a thousand career receiving yards in springtime. It was Alonzo Moore and Jay Adams. Alonzo Moore retired in the offseason, two time general. Uh, and obviously, yeah. Jay Adams is on the showboats now. He's one of the best receivers in this league. It's just mm-hmm. we can't get to see him at his full capacity because they can't pass protect. And it's just yeah. a shame. And it was cool. I was actually able to speak to uh, Vinny Papali the week before um, the season on my grandfather's radio show, Fighting Words Radio Network, on blogtalk.com. If you guys want to go check that out, I was able to speak to Dick Vermeil as well, legendary head coach of the Rams. But oh, Vinny was talking about how he was uh, incredibly influenced by DeAndre Overton in this offseason, talking about coming out of the top of his routes a little more quicker. And just his improvement going into this season and, you know, his dreams of getting to the NFL. Um, you know, I talked to him about maybe being a household name in this league. And it's in the cards because he talked about even coaching one day, maybe even in this league. And I know uh, yeah. A.J. McCarron was talking about that, too, which was pretty interesting. Hmm. 
Nice. Nice. Ah, uh, Day Day Wood. Uh, Day Day, um, God, what's his name? Day Day, uh, Day, uh, it's Day Day, Day Wood, I believe. Number two that yeah. just missed that ball. Yeah. Oh, oh, shoot. Oh, shoot. Sp speaking of Papali. Oh yeah, he's he had that beautiful toe that uh, toe drag. Yeah, week one. I mean, there's there's something, uh, Stalins. You gotta you gotta control that motion, that, that control the uh, uh, the mojo back. You gotta you gotta bring that mojo back to you. You gotta bring it back. Come on, Stalins. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's he got beat. Yeah, that's just that's yeah. just blown coverage. That's bad. Yeah. And they're going to go for two. We'll see how that one goes. See how they can execute here. And, oh, um, sack and incomplete. Good stop there. Oh. Yeah. Number one, Johnson, he was terrible in week one. And they are going to miss Gilbert in this game if they can't contain yeah. wide receiver three. Yikes. Yeah, I, like that Luis Perez uh, deep ball throw. That was I was like, our secondary is getting cooked, and yeah. I was just like not mentally prepared for what about the uh, XFL talent about to show up. Being like, oh, I'm like, great, this is. But then eventually, Skip Holtz does what, like any other coach do is adjust, and yep. there we go. Shout the out crowd to Gilbert. there, man. It's it's good. Birmingham showed up. Mhm. Mm like I was like, it. yeah, and and we saw in that background that graphic where it was like, oh, fourteen thousand people, and we saw a lot of stallions red to that game. So that one, I was pretty shocked overall. I thought it was going to be a little more. I thought we we're going to get a little more stallions blue, which we did, but I thought like there was not going to be as much stallions since it is a road game after all. So oh yeah, uh, I guess your your boy Brandon is there. Uh, Brandon. Oh sweet. Yeah. He um he was gonna hop on, but he, uh, shout out to Gilbert for the birth of his child, though. But shout out to Brandon; he's been yeah. um, picking great picks. If you guys are into betting, seven and two now. Yeah. Oh, year. oh. I I saw I saw something uh, earlier today about the whole uh, over under for the DC Defenders game. Which I don't. I'm I'm not gonna lie, Brandon. I don't know how you hit on that. That was that was a crazy bet. And the mm -hmm. DC Defenders too. Yeah. Them, which is crazy. I guess I, I picked the Renegades because they're at home. I just picked the home team, but Yeah. Uh, you'd figure. But I would uh, say this the attendance in Choctaw today was rough. It yeah, was I rough. know they're in a big stadium, but still that that did not look like that that should not look like that at all. Like especially if you're you're one of the teams that made it out alive from the uh, XFL, like even the even the Sea Dragons felt like they could have done a better uh, oh, a they, better attendance they, game. They were all year last year. They yeah. had a great fan base. Yeah, but I, I saw numbers at Choctaw less than nine thousand. So that's yeah. that's that's a little iffy there. People were saying yeah. playing smaller stadiums, but it's like, well, you're taking away from the you know the whole aspect of this is pro football yeah. in spring. You know, you don't want them to play in you know in an, like a hockey field type thing the yeah. afl and, or something like that you know and not only that not everyone has a like a smaller stadium has multiple stadiums for their city so True. like at least arlington yeah they have they actually do have some areas that they could look into but i think choctaw choctaw was the at least like probably the better option especially since it is an actual arlington not just like saying like oh we're in arlington we're arlington but we actually play in frisco texas yeah or uh, so I'm just saying, like even the Maulers, like they, like let's just say they had to move to Pittsburgh. The only, the only stadium they were gonna play again was gonna be in a uh, Hind or Acushore Stadium. So, hmm. like there's, that was gonna be the option. So yeah, there's also the option of maybe like talking to like some other leagues, like USL Championship League, because the Pittsburgh Riverhounds they also have a really nice pitch. Um, that could have easily been maybe talked to. And I don't know. I, yeah. I do hope the Maulers come back. That was my team last year. Um, oh, no. Sadly to say. <laughs> I, 
I just like the underdog story about them. And also, I think that, you know, genuinely, I might have a little bias that they probably had a top yeah. three uniform, spring uniform ever when they rebranded to that. Oh, black yeah. So when clean. that that black and gold made so much sense. When I saw the purple and orange, I was just it felt off. When I saw the first time in 2023, I'm just like, this does not feel like the Steelers brand because you had the Pittsburgh Steelers, black and gold. Pittsburgh Pirates, black and gold. Pittsburgh yeah. Penguins, black and gold. But this one, I was just like the purple and orange just like threw me off a little bit. I was like, oh, okay. And then <laughs> when they finally uh, branded to the black and gold, I'm like, okay, that's that's a whole lot better than it was. So, a guy on the Pittsburgh Maulers staff, I really wish wound up with a job this year, uh, was Jaron Horton, who led that defensive uh, unit. One hundred. I was expecting him to at least be one of the coaching staff, especially whoever had a weaker defense. Because if he was on a UFL team, I would have been scared. I would have been like, shoot. If he was like, let's just say, maybe on the Arlington Renegades, or no, 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 no. If he was on the Houston Roughnecks defense, I would have been like, uh, I would have been scary. That front seven secondary, at least we could get away with, but just, and I'm going to hate week five the most because just for the amount of history that the rough, rough gamblers and stallions have, I'm like, this is a game that's going to, that's just going to annoy me for just because (laughs) knowing the history and we got to a great return, it looks like. I must Yeah, have, I just missed it. Let's see the replay. I'm glad that like, I also do like what John DeLaFippio did when bring some of his guys over, like the kicker. I, I, I'm surprised yeah. that uh, Cole Murphy's not kicking in this league. Yeah, Lu- Luis Aguilar, I'm also in a shock, too. I thought he oh, was going to yeah. make the 50 50- the 50 man roster for, for Houston. But I mean, their kicker currently for Houston is not too bad. So it's not like it's, so it's not like a bad thing, but EJ Bates, by God, he's, uh, he is, he's a nasty man. 64, 62. And yeah. And he, 52, honestly, yeah. On, on that, on that 64, he could have probably pushed it four yards back. He had air under it still. I mean, yeah, man, he's got a leg to him. But here's the thing. I feel like he needs to do – a big test needs to happen is when he goes to the outdoor stadiums. Like, I just need to see – I need to see what happens there because I think after the Michigan Panthers game, I think they're going to go to San Antonio week four. So they have another week in the Dome. And then finally after that, they have another road opponent, which is going to be the Showboats at Memphis week uh, week five. Okay. So that will be a good test for him. Ricky Person Jr. with a good run there, yeah. bulldozing someone. Tackle oh, 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 Martinez. He woke up. He did wake up. I, I retract my statements about Adrian Martinez. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It oh finally my it finally took him almost the entire entire quarter, but or at least two games in a quarter. But he woke up. What a throw. For- what a throw to Marlon my Marlon Williams. Williams. Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of wide receivers, what were your thoughts about Anthony Beck complaining about Gary Jennings going to the Stallions? I I, I don't know. I, honestly, I think out of all the coaches, to tell you the truth, Anthony Beck might be the biggest whiner in the league. Um, but I, I don't know. I, In my opinion, I think that if he wants to complain about, you know, player acquisition there's tons of xfl guys that don't have jobs i mean there's tons of people he could have drawn from i mean the stallions went out and did what they always do and what they've done the past two seasons is go get the best players available overload at the position if needed if that's not a method to win then i don't know what is and i don't know how you can hate on it that's just my thought but anthony beck i I think he made some even in the win last week i think he made some questionable calls on that super challenge especially but and especially like knowing that that team missed the playoffs at seven and three last year um it's a little bit disappointing i feel like if they don't get to the the postseason this year he'll also probably be canned because i mean it's the the, uh, the super the championships in st louis he's got a he's yeah a huge draw for the the city 
and the UFL is pretty much begging on it at this point. I mean, if they don't at least host a playoff game, I, I don't even know. I, I because I feel like there's some teams that could probably pack. Uh, that could definitely pack uh, St. Louis for that weekend. I feel like Birmingham, Birmingham can do it because we saw it with them with Cannon in 2020 in both years. Uh, an, another team, I feel like. Uh, ooh, who would be another good team? Yo, okay, there's my boy, Lightning Jr. Hello, boys. Just inside to see that Marlon Williams CD. Exactly. But, uh, but let's see. Because, I mean, I mean, I feel like St. Louis, if they make the championship game, I feel like for Spring League, at least for Spring League in general, that would be, that would be the greatest thing to watch. That would be the greatest thing to see right there. It, dude, I mean, 40,000 people doesn't lie. I mean, yeah. It's definitely what they're banking on, like you said. And if they fall short of that, that's going to be rough for that brand. What about the USFL conference then? Imagine if, imagine the USFL championship. Let's just say St. Louis makes it in. What if, like, let's say Birmingham Salons make it in for that one? I really want to know how they're going to distribute tickets around the area because I really need to know for that one because I think all the Battlehawks fans would definitely uh, fill up that Uh stadium like immediately. So, that's gonna be I, weird. Like I think that. they they might need a T Sir Randy guy plus C time reports caller Stallions versus Memphis and UFC all in at once. <laughs> uh yeah, I was just thinking in my mind is just like um uh, if that I think they might have to fill up the entire stadium. They're gonna have to Open since up it everything. isn't yeah, it is an NFL stadium after all. So this might be treated like a Super Bowl, but you know, a little much more cheaper, obviously, but yeah. I feel like they'll do, obviously, like um, each sideline will get like a fan base type type deal, you know? Um, yeah. And the, the lower bowl, obviously, and they'll sell what they can and, and the rest. But if that's the case, if the Stallions play the Battle Hawks in the championship, that'll be the biggest springtime football game ever. Like there'll yeah. be more people there than any other spring football game in in my opinion, I, I I don't see that being topped. But also, I mean, I feel like either way, people from St. Louis just want to see football. I was, yeah. I was born around there, and it is a football place. Um, and you know the fact that the Rams left the way they did and never refunded season ticket yeah. holders. I mean, they are uh, definitely a, a, a holding a grudge, if you will. And the fact that the UFL kept the St. Louis Battlehawks, it was a no brainer, obviously. But I'm glad yeah. they got a brand. Yeah, and uh, oh, another team I'm kind of glad, which is more for the fact that they were my team until they moved to the USFL Conference, which was the Roughnecks. But, hey, 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 I, I, I only see them as the gambler still, so I, I don't really see them as the true Roughnecks team. Uh, like, I remember, because, like, how I was introduced in spring football was basically, like, a friend of mine, since he knows I was like an NFL fan, a football fan in general, he was just like, hey, um, the XFL is coming back. And I was just like, I was just thinking like, I did not know anything about the XFL at all. I didn't know any squat about spring football in general. And then while I was researching, I'm like, oh, this might be actually uh, very interesting to watch. And I was just like, all right, I guess I'll see what happens when they finally uh, unleash the pro- release the product. But I guess I was in, at least I got a taste of spring football in 2019 with the uh, AAF. Uh, even though I didn't really get to see all the games due to the amount of uh, the network, since it was just like in random, random channels. I just yeah, that one they just they just opened it early and they just did not really uh, did not really fully plan it out because that's what I loved about the yeah. XFL in 2020, where it was just like, hey, let's spend the next few years setting it up in the behind the scenes before we start. Uh, bringing in teams before we start everything. Let's start. Let's just start from the. Let's start the foundation first, and then after that, we'll start. We'll bring in the football right after. And so, I think that's what the USFL did well the past two years as well. I mean, they were honestly probably the most successful solo entity of spring football going back to the '80s, obviously. But yeah. having two back-to-back seasons with back-to-back championships, no issues, no questions of even folding. They didn't really need to merge, to tell you the truth. It was just for the best yeah. best idea of football. I mean, down the line, they probably yeah. would have had to think about it regardless. But um, in terms of what was best for the sport and this 
I guess, time slot for football. It's better to not battle each other than to just yeah. work with each other, you know? And some of the XFL had their problems, too, like the schedule consistency. Like, there was just games on on just a random game on Thursday, a random game on Friday, a Monday night football game. And then, yeah, overall, it was Saturday and Sunday, but there wasn't really, like, much of a consistency compared to the USFL, where it was just like, okay, we know the games are on Saturday and Sunday. Yes, the times are going to at least be slightly different, but but overall, for the most part, they're kind of, like, have that same time range. Like, oh, that game's at at 10 a.m., that game's going to be at uh, 1 p.m., or that game's at 4 p.m., and so on and so forth. So they kind of had that similar in. time. Yeah. yeah. See Case lead a drive here. Yeah. Let's hopefully see DeMarcus Gates step up. Scooby writes in. But I think we have a – but there is a big test coming up for Birmingham this weekend in terms of ratings and viewings because guess what? Next week is going to be the first regional uh, – regional coverage game. So we're going to see how that one goes for Birmingham. That is a big test. That is a big and test. Also San Antonio too. San Antonio, since they're also going to be part of it the same time as well. So we're going to I see how that Scooby one goes. Right yeah. Yep. Scooby right. Uh, yeah. Insane man. Shark dog. <laughs> <laughs> the ring ceremony was very nice. I saw videos of that. It looked very, Looked like they had a good turnout. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to see they got the, the team the rings as well, though. I, I was yeah. worried they weren't going to give them, um, give them out from either championship from last year, but I'm glad they did. Like I knew they were at least going to do it, but Arlington, I'm surprised they did not really have a like ceremony that would like we recall. Like I, I thought they were going to. Like, I thought week one, it was going to be, like, I thought it was going to be at least, you know, I've been better, like, big on both sides because it's like, oh, representing on this corner, we have the XFL champions. And I thought since the game's going to be at Arlington, I thought they were at least going to show a banner or something. But, no, it was just the, uh, it was just like, okay, let's just, uh, let's just play the game, which is not bad. But if you're doing, if you're, like, the XFL champion and you kind of been promoting more on that one, you should have done a, ring ceremony or something i mean just look how much compared to arlington bro a, a championship winning team who had less than nine thousand people show up this team in birmingham has a banner ceremony mm. a ring ceremony they just care about their team you yeah just tell. they act the, the, they have actual ties to the community and mm. you know i i like that that's why i like this team a lot it's a really fundamentally yeah. sound football team from top to bottom but at the same time oh flea flicker here well, Case Cook is on the run. Wait, it's smashed. Jesus. They need... To, my gosh, man. He's getting hit too much. Oh, okay. Then I'm probably ahead of you then. What what third, what down are you on right now? Third down? Am I... Oh, okay then. Okay, I'm still ahead. Then I saw it earlier. Then I probably just didn't like process it in my head. But we got a, got a flag right now. I don't know why I'm behind you. I That's mean, a, I, again, I'll, I'll try to refrain from it is, <laughs> saying too much I'll then. try. Yeah, it is uh, from spec. I mean, it is spectrum, but it's like, a, I thought was like, okay, since it's streaming, I thought it was going to be at least like still some delay. But I know Hulu does have like a pretty good delay, a pretty big delay. So it is probably a possible that's what happened. That's what's going on right now. Well, I do apologize for that, my friend. No, you're good. You're good. No, no, no. I had that history before with, uh, with uh, I, I think if Lightning's listening to this, he knows when we uh when we live streamed the games when we had when I had Amazon or sorry sorry I had NFL I was using NFL Plus to watch the game. He was using Amazon, and I was pretty much behind him throughout some parts of the game. He knows about it, so <laughs> so I am I wasn't that same boat before. So there's so it's all good. Yeah, another punt, man. And uh, I mean Memphis, they need to. They need to turn something around, but good stop by Birmingham's defense. They're playing mm -hmm. bend, don't break here. Yeah, I'd like to see it. All right, it's, it's hard uh, for me to debate who has the best front seven and defense um, in this league. It's between because, it's between three USFL teams for me: Michigan, Birmingham, and Houston. And, yeah, that's the one thing when I was like when I was trying to do predictions like during the off season, I was like. 
who am I? I like I know I'm choosing Birmingham because they have they had the best roster retention. They had their defense was pretty much they upgraded like by a lot. Yeah. And and then when I was going for like, all right, who's gonna be my second place team? Because like, okay, you had the showboats who basically kind of like had that offseason mass improvement, especially bringing John D. Flippo. So I was like, all right, maybe they're the obvious ones, which I still did pick them, but I was like, all right, what about the uh well, with the Roughnecks, I'm like, they could actually ball. Like, if Reed Sinet and uh, or Jared Garantano was going to be the guys, I was like, they actually might be a very scary team if their offense is actually uh, that good. But Reed, Casey- Reed Sinet played very well last week. Yeah. He, he had a good completion percentage. I, don't, I just am watching the replay of that third and 15 conversion yeah. with Jay Adams. That is a big let up by, I don't know who's number yeah. 14 on the bottom there. You know, why didn't we take fourth down there? Good disruption to Marcus Gates on Vinny there. Yeah. But, you know Case what? Is, dude, every time I see Case, he's on the floor. Yeah, I just – and he looks like he's about to, like, about to, like, collapse each time. He looks like he's about to, like, all right, one more play. If, like, if he gets, like, a sack one more time, he's going to, like, He's just basically gonna get like crushed or something. Looks like his bones are like gonna <laughs> collapse on himself. No, he definitely looks like he's not comfortable. And you know, I, I'm not one to say anything negative about Case Cook because I love the chef, but yeah. you know, if there's no consistency getting done in this half, I, I think they might need to try some kind of two quarterback situation with Troy Williams. Darius Victor yeah. slips up there and Great stop. No one. There was no opening there. That that D line from Birmingham is just disgusting. Houston was my sleeper champion. Bet at like eleven hundred before the season. Oof. My sleeper pick, and I have receipts. San Antonio to to show up for XFL, but I, I my sleeper for USFL. I don't know. I don't think I have one. My, I just think Beham uh, is gonna take this yeah. all away. I mean, no, I didn't. Okay, there weren't like a sleeper pick for a champion for me, but a sleeper pick to at least go to the playoffs again uh, was uh, Michigan. Because defense, I was like, all right, I'm sold on the defense. 100%. I was like, all right, I'm picking the defense 100%. But I was thinking, like, all right, if EJ Perry could show, like, hey, if he shows those flashes like he did in the uh, first two games he started, then I'm like, all right, like Michigan might actually be a very scary team to, uh, look into for both not only the USFL conference, but as the league in general. So, but I did pick them at two and eight. I just didn't know what I was like going into with that, with that team. And especially how everyone else was like, all right, all right, this, like everyone else in the XFL conference had improved massively. And I was thinking like, okay, like Michigan's going to face a very tough, very tough schedule, or at least very tough opponents compared to the other one else. But I agree right with now. everything you just said. I just think their main question mark right now is if EJ Perry can tap into that magic just just, just one more or two more times because if not, I think Danny Etling is going to get the start because, I mean, I know yeah. the one play he was in last week, he fumbled. Fumble. But, you know, it was, it was one play. Yeah. Let's, let's get him a week of practice. Let's get him reps. But I, I still believe in EJ Perry. Um, mm-hmm. I also am just one of the biggest Frank Ginda fans you will ever find. I think he mm-hmm. is – a stellar player, and honestly, he's he's Michigan's Scooby Wright in, in their yeah. in its respective way. I mean, he is a very charismatic and Mike Mike linebacker type of personality, you know. Yeah, but yeah, these games. Uh, but I'm so excited for whatever whatever comes for the next weeks to come for the U for the uh, for the UFL. Uh, hopefully, hopefully everything goes a little bit better. Hopefully, the ratings at least stay the same, or if not, go higher. So I just want to. Hopefully, this goes well because you know this is this this is a pinnacle point for both sides, and this was a pinnacle point for both sides, especially after cutting such teams like the Sea Dragons, such, the the other rough, the Roughnecks of the XFL in 2023. Yeah. The uh, New the New Orleans Breakers, which there was some, there was a pretty good amount of fans and uh, a handful of fans in that uh, when they're in Birmingham for both seasons. So who knows what happens there? So um, hopefully next season, I'm hoping. I don't think I'm thinking like at most if we don't get expansion, I'm fine with it. You know, just do what you got to keep doing in order to get this league to uh, to be better. Because, uh, but I'm hoping. 
Uh, I'm hoping maybe if we do expand, I think people want to see Dragons back for sure. Yeah. And I'm kind of saying we better get Canton back because that's it was supposed to be because Canton was supposed to be there in 2024, but obviously we saw we we know what happens now. But but hey, hopefully Canton gets their team officially. They're not just going to be like, oh, well, the Maulers are going to basically just chill there while while well, I uh, did see. The UFL did patent the Canton Bulldogs name, logo, uniform, and stuff. Yep. So Ohio Bulldogs too, and then I mean, Nashville is get, got a trademark. So who knows what happens there? I would like to see New Orleans back, mainly because I I know people are going to be like, why? Like why? Mainly because of the pure fact alone is that team was very respectable for two seasons in the postseason, two years in a row. Mm-hmm. It's a good team that you can put like a good product on television with, you know, yeah. and maybe not all the guys are going to return, but it's a good brand. It was a good brand for two years. I think that's a team and new Orleans is a good market as well. Um, yeah. And Seattle is a for sure lock. If they expand, they need to probably yeah. get an LA team as well to get a little base of operations well, over on the West side to make it at least make some sense because having one outlier over there, just they, they won't do it. I know they won't. Yeah, Just I've been trying purposes. to push for the San Diego. You, you, if you keep seeing my act, I've been pushing San Diego narratives since I've been the. I'm the West Coast. I'm more of the West Coast guy in the in this area. So I'm just kind of hoping that San Diego comes in. They're the eighth um, highest populated uh, city in the United States. You know, they already they have a stadium already in Snapdragon. So put at least a San Diego team, whether it's either a, a former XFL team like the Wildcats or maybe put in maybe in a former USFL team like the Express, like the Express, just move them in San Diego, just rebrand them to a San Diego team. And hopefully uh, many te- hopefully it'll be like the St. Louis of the, uh, maybe of the USFL conference possibly, or just maybe just another uh, St. Louis in general, because again, another team that got, that kind of got screwed over by the NFL, specifically uh, yeah. uh, Dean Spano. So we're hopefully I'm just seeing San Diego to be the, the possible narrative because although LA would be interesting and it will probably put them in like um, the Galaxies, uh, LA Galaxies uh, arena, or I keep forgetting. Dig- Dignity the Health Col- Sports Park. Not the not the Coliseum. I think. Well, because I, if we're going based on XFL 2020, uh, they were in the uh, Dignity in Dignity Health Sports Park, or I think that's the name of it okay. right now. But that was the LA Galaxy. It was like a thirty thousand seat stadium. They put up a decent amount of fans based on what I was seeing. But I think putting them in San Diego will probably be a lot more better. And. I, I, you laid it out perfectly, kind of the same scenario that St. Louis went through with their NFL team. They have a really good population, a good football crowd. That So no-brainer, in my opinion. And honestly, California definitely deserves one or two or three teams like Texas. Jay Sternberger with a big catch there. Yeah. And I didn't I didn't shout out Isaiah Zuber on that little end-around yeah. uh, return. He got smashed, though, got hit really hard. But Oof. good to see him. Um, you know, in Stallion's uniform after two years on the ga- uh, the Gamblers. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, Cam DeBot, you know, comments, Oakland's a good spot too. All right. I think my ideal, like, thing, I'm mixed with, I'm mixed with Oakland because I do love the idea in general because especially not only you lost the Raiders again, you lost the Warriors. Yes, they just moved across the bay, but you still essentially lost the Warriors. And then you have... And then obviously now you lost the uh, you're now going to lose the A's to Sacramento next season, and they're going to go to Vegas sometime in 2028. So, so I'm just thinking, you know, people maybe a return of the Invaders might be the might be the uh, best way to go, especially. Uh, but now the question is, would you play at the Coliseum? Because Right now, yes, the Arlington Renegades are playing at Chaka, which is going to be a, which is a, which is where the Rangers were formerly playing in. So now, can it work out for the uh, for the Invaders to play at the Coliseum once again? I I don't see why not. I, I really don't. And an, another big place I could see, I don't know what yeah. city, but Arizona. They just lost their they're losing their NH, their NHL team. That I mean, why not? 
I mean, we could do some scouting into the Mexican Football League. I mean, there's a guy, I forget his name, but he's on the Renegades, number 19, the return man. I mean, just, just getting teams closer to other markets so we can draw talent out yeah. of these areas. I mean, the CFL, we sadly lost a couple guys, yeah. um, a really good player, so the CFL this offseason just because um, we have the roster size. Um, um, but MBT we, being one of them. <laughs> yeah, Cam Echoes Looper. Mm. Um, we lost... I know Jakir Pearson's injured on the, the Battle Hawks, but there was a couple other guys that definitely deserved a job down here. Paris Ford still doesn't have a job. I don't know how a great defensive back for the Generals the last two years. But yeah, um, it just goes to show you, like you were talking about earlier, the amount of talent in this league, the fact that so many really good players still don't have jobs. It just shows the quality of competition. And we're seeing it. Look at these one-score games. Like Every game has been one score except like two. Yeah. Like, and then, although they've close. been pretty defensive, but it's still pretty impressive on how it looks like. So it's not like, oh, we're like it's defensive and it's like, oh, it's just getting pretty boring. No, it's like fun. we've been seeing some fun offensive plays. The defense is pretty much been like a good chess match. It's just we're trying to see how each of these coaches play out. And that's what's kind of the, like the biggest thing for all these teams during this uh, season is just like, how can your coach? actually coach a football game and now rely just solely on uh talent itself so True. so this is what i kind of like about the ufl we're just seeing more of the uh we're seeing more like hey it's gonna be a coaching based thing not just a oh talent and oh yeah C coaching is the biggest thing in this league by by a mile you think quarterback you think running back you think defensive coordinator it's head coach. I mean, if yeah, I mean, look at the one, look at the co the coaches right now that are winless: Curtis Johnson and Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops got to the championship at four and six last year. Don't know how. I great run, but starting at zero and three, you're one of the worst coaches in the league. And Curtis yeah. Johnson, he had a good little run with the Gamblers last year in the USFL, but probably a guy they could have moved on from to tell you the truth uh, you know didn't really I'm show still mixed on him like i was thinking like yeah they went five and five and they did show what improvements they did they i'm glad they brought back kenji bahar because at yeah. least like you know but yeah although he turns to be turnover but at least i know he's like hey he's a better at least game manager that at least i'm aware of but maybe rates and that could be the uh could finally be the guy to step up so True. Who knows right there, but uh, I'm still mixed. Like, I knew Jeff Fisher wasn't the guy. I think everyone believed Jeff Fisher wasn't the guy for the Panthers. So, <laughs> but Mike Nolan, I mean, I mean, he's doing some improvements, especially I like, I think we we're expecting him to be a very defensive guy. And that's what we're, uh, that's what right now we're getting. Uh, we got a new change. In, he got a new change in offensive coordinator this past off season to, for him to get the Philadelphia stars uh, wide receiver coach. So we'll see. We'll see what happens there. Oh, oh, all right. We got a good game. We got a first down from number 16. Oh, there. Wow, I was about to say Darius Victor. <laughs> yeah. But but I guess I'm, I'm seeing the – oh, go ahead. I'm liking, I'm liking what I'm seeing from Adrian so far. He's, 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 being, he's been calm, a little bit errant sometimes, but I haven't seen that big – that big blunder yet. I'm thinking it's finally like we're finally seeing him be more like, hey, like since we're no longer just seeing him to be like, okay, you're just going to be the uh, wildcat like legs type of guy. We're going to get you at least get some full reps in. So like you got reps for sure in practice. Yeah. So I'm thinking, I think they're finally like seeing, all right, all right, let's not disrupt this uh, entire process because I'll, they would have probably put in Matt Corral any point of the game this during this half, but no, they're keeping Martinez in. So I'm thinking they're finally like, all right, let's Martinez kind of get settled in because like, I think they kind of had, again, it was like probably, again, I'm kind of going that whole expectation. Like, Hey, I'm treating him. Like if he was going to be a rookie quarterback, that's sure. how I'm treating him overall. Like, hey, he's going to make mistakes, but as long as he keeps developing, uh, we may have our guy. We may have like an officially our guy. Then maybe what we're all thinking of with uh with Matt Corral earlier. So, so we'll go. We'll see what happens. A little over two and a half minutes left in this half here. Mm-hmm. And. It looks like uh, is there a timeout. Um, 
Looks like there is, yep. But but this game is but last time at least compared from last time these two met, these are very two different teams going ahead and it's been a cold grind out duel and I'm I'm here for it. I'm I'm no, happy I, about it. I, I like this. We're seeing two really good teams, two really good coaches battle it out. That's what you want. It's nothing like that 42 to 2 game, which as a Stallions yeah. fan, you know, you want that. But as a football fan, you, you like this. This is how you yeah. know that your team earns it, you know? Yeah. And that 42 to 2 game, bro. Todd Haley lost his team on the sideline. No one wanted to yeah. be there. Yeah. And then remember at the end where he went to skip Pultz? Oh, yeah. He was, he was like, I'll remember, I'll, I'll remember that. I'm like, dude, what? We I'm like, you. <laughs> Yeah, and then going to week ten, I was like, I was like waiting. I'm like, all right, let's see how this goes. And Stallings basically destroyed the showboats once again. And I'm like, bro, why, why did you say that? Like, especially you had nothing to back up. No, they had, they they went on a five game win streak last year and didn't prove anything when it mattered. I do wish Cole Kelly was still in this league, though. I think he's a good quarterback. I liked watching him last year. Mm -hmm. It was fun. Yeah, at least a quarterback three spot. At least you know he's got the arm talent. And honestly, if you want a QB sneak or a tush push, he's a one hundred percent guarantee in this in this kind of league. Yeah, he's six five, six six, like two fifty. He's huge. You're not stopping that man for one yard. There's no that's way. A, that's a Broncos. Uh, uh, that's a Broncos quarterback when you see one. It is. I mean, especially when you think of Paxton Lynch and. <laughs> Oh God! What he did with Joe the Joe Flacco or or uh, who else? Who else? Uh, well, hey, Drew Lock. All right, I'm not gonna. Oh okay, yeah, I'm not gonna disrespect my man Drew Lock right there. At least he he uh he showed up when he needed to when he was a Seahawk. So yeah, hey, he's a he's a giant now. So I'm happy for him. Hopefully, I mean he can compete for the starting job. I'm I could definitely see it. He might have a re he might have a redemption tour going on. So who knows? If the Giants don't take a quarterback, I can definitely see him starting over Daniel Jones. Like, Probably I, like I, obviously Daniel Jones will start Week One because forty million reasons why. But yeah, oh, or maybe, there's... or maybe the Giants are just like, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I don't know. Just let let's keep you in civilian clothes, man. Like, might be a question for for the Giants coming down to Week One when it when it matters, but. Hey, man, there's also the opportunity for some of these quarterbacks. I mean, Chase Garbers is playing himself onto a practice squad, in my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. A.J. McCarron could easily go back if he wants. Um, to be Luis a Bengal Perez. again, who knows? Yeah. Luis Perez passed 6,000 career passing yards in springtime football. Yeah. Oh, oh, Martinez is going. Ah, uh, mm. I thought he had it, but no. No, but fourth and goal now. We might get to see uh, Blewett. Go ahead. Yeah, that's what it's kind of looking like. Smart. Oh, no. Yeah. Wait, wait. Are, are they actually going for it? I Be aggressive. I mean, why not? Wait. Oh, all right. Right now it's two minutes. So, I mean, they have, they have plenty of time to think about whether or not they go. I mean, I'm fine with either option because it is fourth and short. So, it's not like – oh, no. It's fourth and goal. So, it's not – never mind. Fourth and goal from the three. I I would probably go for the kick just to just to kind of keep up and then just go because I mean they're gonna get the ball in the second half. So I mean I would rather probably go for get the points now than than anything. Yeah, I agree with that. But I there's a good chance if they score here, man, they pull away. With, but it, there's not really a need to. You're right. I mean, they really just need to. They go up by three here. Get three here. They're up by six. Then, and then uh, it's up to the showboats to uh, show up on uh, on offense. Yeah, yeah. I would. So I'd, we'll... I'd bet on that instead. <laughs> Just take the field goal if I'm skip. Yeah, because their offense. But let's negative start thinking about halftime right notes. Now. I mean, halftime hmm? notes. Rushing game for Memphis is not even alive. Like they're, I, I yeah. talked about Darius Victor at the start of the game. Like he got in groove a little bit last week, getting involved in the pass game. Even, he, yeah, I, I haven't seen him. See him twice, three times. I mean, and then the Stallions defense is all is definitely still rocking. It's still that that defense is that defensive line is killing Case Cook. It's like 
all game, even if the score is currently like 12 to 9. Uh, Case Cook is just getting like buried out there. They're they're making a case to be the the best front seven or the best defense in the league right now. I mean, I mean we can't sleep on this Memphis Showboats roster. It is a good offense. They yeah. have playmakers. They have a good coach. His defense is just shutting them down handedly. Yeah, um, and especially in the red zone and causing two punts. I mean, that's a good it's a good way to stay in the lead here. And Adrian Martinez, man. I mean, we yeah. had our uh, questions about him. And a lot of people did on social media, but to see him come out here, and I know he had the fumble, I know he's had some errant throws, but he's leading this team to a, yeah. a good first half. Yeah, but here we go. Chris Blewett is going to go. They're going to go with Chris Blewett to get to extend the lead by six. So we'll see how it Good goes. Chris, Chris Blewett, try, uh, I mean, a man that's uh, replacing a, cert, a certain QB that's in Dallas right now. Uh, I mean that's some. I mean he has some pretty big shoes to fill. I'm hoping he does. He does well. He's doing well so far. So I'm happy. I'm happy about it. But he was man, really good I, for the Maulers last year. Yeah, but A couple man, of here and there. Brandon, yeah, but man, Brandon Aubrey, that that is uh, something you cannot. You can't. You're not gonna replicate. You just gonna, yeah, like he was special. He was special. Like man went from signing to the man went from winning a championship to going to the NFL, and then he got a Pro Bowl already in the in his first season in the NFL. That is that is amazing. We might get to see that in with Jake Bates after probably after this season. So if he keeps it up, and the Lions, which is my team for anyone out there watching, um, have already gave him a call. So yeah, so I mean, he's already like in Michigan. He's already it's pretty much already a local hero as it is. So it's like, hey, if if anything after the season, when the season's over, I would not be surprised that the Lions go knock on his door and be like, hey, how would you like to become the the kicker, the kicker for the Lions at this point? And even then, he is from Texas. Uh oh no, no, I was about to say, uh, he, I was say there's. The, I was like, well, there's Kyle Fairbairn, so I mean, they're probably True. they're probably gonna roll with him. So I don't think the Texas, obviously, the Cowboys are not gonna do anything for. They got for, their kicker for a long time. <laughs> for that, they got they got the kicker for at least hopefully the next decade. But uh, which I'm kind of sad for Brandon Aubrey, especially during the playoffs, during the wild card game. I I was just witnessing what was happening with. Dallas, I, mean, I like because you you let you let Brandon Aubrey go in there, go in that game, and you did all that, and then after the missed field goal, I was just like, it, it just get wasn't free this day. man. I was just like, <laughs> free this man right now. You get him out of there. <laughs> free I mean, this Dallas, man. Dallas free the postseason him. is a joke. So I mean, yes, and we saw the Dallas syndrome today in Arlington. He, he did. We did. Or I saw a meme, actually, um, with the Arlington Renegades logo slowly fading into the, <laughs> the Atlanta Falcons logo. I, that was from the UFL. Uh, that was from UFL update. Uh, I saw that. <laughs> it's true. I mean, how do you lose that game today, man? That was a mm-hmm. blunder in its own case. Yeah. Getting out of there. Another flag on the play. Yeah. And holding. It's going to be a holding call. It's a good call. Good call. My team should have. Yeah, if you want to know, Lion Juniors, he's a Defenders fan. I had him. I had him a couple weeks ago before the UFL season began as a UFL Media Day preview. And uh, yeah, right now he's he's still comprom- he's still wondering how did the Defenders win this game despite being uh, very terrible throughout. the Throughout pretty much a good amount of that game, they were they were not looking like the defenders team that everyone expected going into the season. The one thing I noticed about the defenders this entire season has been they come out of kickoff so so cold, stone cold, and then yeah. after halftime, Jordan Tayamu warms up and he starts making really good throws. That last drive before halftime in this game in the game earlier. I mean, with him on that 17-yard scramble to that uh, to that laser to the end zone. I mean, 
he he has all the talent in the world, but his consistency is what keeps this team back. And honestly, losing um, Abram Smith um, didn't help at all. Yeah, no, that was a huge loss to their rush attack. But they they still did really good creative things today. Um, yeah. But Arlington, I don't know if you saw that little uh, shuffle pass play that they had, where someone was running a little drag route. They got smashed, but they threw the ball back, and it got an extra like twenty yards. But yeah. I don't know how Arlington lost this game. That was a, that was a crazy loss. Yeah, I, mean, the I should be a little scared too. I mean, a great comeback, but just playing playing the way they did in that first half yeah. is not good. And then not, they ha- and then they anything. have a very big test coming up going next week. Well, against the team we're wa- we're winning right now. Uh, so let's see what happens, especially since they're going against another tough defense. Because we, if we saw what happened in week one with the defenders, it, it's probably it could be similar to what we're gonna watch uh, next week. So or what? Hopefully, for some people on the viewers are gonna watch next week because you know what based on what's gonna go on with the regional coverage. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, hopefully the ratings for the regional coverage is pretty good because I'm kind of thinking if we're seeing like 900 views just for for nationwide, then what will be the uh, what will be the regional what will be the regional projections right there? What what are we Not expecting? Um, like I'm thinking if we get 500k, then that would be a that be nothing short of a miracle at that point. That, yeah, that would be. I just hope that they've been doing – oh, big throw to Sage Sarab from Case. Case is looking good, man. I can't mm. lie to you. 11 of 15. But the, the the numbers out of that will definitely determine how well this league has been marketing in these markets. Um, in yeah. my personal opinion, the attendance definitely reflects it as well. So we'll see. Um, I think, yeah. oddly enough, we'll probably see bigger numbers out of places that don't have a UFL team just tuning into some football. But I think overall, week two, um, it was up 17% with viewership from the XFL yeah. and USFL season two. So that's good to see progress yeah. in the right direction. But, um, you know, if they can continue that going forward, man, that's that's all that matters. And they just need to draw more people there. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. Give out tickets for free. You know, just make the yeah. TV product look good. That's what they're investing in. They're not investing in the $10 ticket sales. They're investing yeah. in how this product looks on ESPN or Fox, you know? And, and if they're able to center their focus on that, then, man, we could be looking at a league yeah. that lasts and, and is maybe an NFL while. G League. Yeah, I, yeah, that's what I hope to be. Ho- hopefully, it's going to be around for the rest of my time. Yeah, I, I just want year-round football, professional yeah. football. That's that's what I want. And I'm glad that we're able to see it tonight. It's pretty yeah. awesome. One Very thing... Fortunate. I'm think I do what I liked about the USFL. What I miss about it that they were very more community like during their time before they had to obviously go to Arlington to be the uh to for the practices and team uh for the practices and training camp. But so but like at least when they were in Birmingham, at least I like could tell like, hey, they're going to uh like they're at least fair community, especially you know Bo Scarborough himself. Like he was going around the area being not only like oh promoting the ufl but being just like a cut a community type of guy too for the for the entire city of birmingham so that's why i kind of liked about it i'm like hey like if we if they become more like probably your uh like maybe be more community like hopefully within when we like when every team comes back to their personal um to their stadiums or practices in their actual home home area hopefully we get more community-based events they they show more like con more like hey we're the birmingham sounds we're here to stay you know we're like they become bigger than what they what they wanted to be in the be in the first place no i agree with you the community wor- groundwork that the usfl did in birmingham um when they moved some teams around to their respective cities in memphis and michigan and uh, detroit last year um you know they did a lot of work with schools, YMCA's, youth academies, youth teams. Like it's always good to see that kind of attachment to the community. Uh, Case Cook just Case just threw a duck right there. Oh, uh, that was a close one. That was a close one. Twelve was sixteen, one hundred twenty-five yards, a touchdown, and no picks. Case yeah. is having a good first half. Uh, Birmingham's just just outperforming them on yeah. defense as well as just being able to 
keep the ball yeah. in their offense's hands. So that's that's the key. And the fact that not- Memphis was doing that better than both the teams they faced so far, and they're not doing it better than Birmingham, that just shows they have yet to eclipse Birmingham when it comes to scheme, structure, roster, talent, coaching, whatever you want to name it. Birmingham is the top dog in this league. You see greatness yeah. every time they step on the field. Ooh. That was a close one to Day Day. Uh, yeah. uh, Day Day Day. But John oh, Chavis, why, why, God, that man could coach a defense really, really yes. well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like that's a guy we. Yeah, that's go, a guy we, we. What? No, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> oh no, that's a guy we like. We never really like talked about. That's a guy like people don't really talk about as much for a reason why the sounds are that great. Is is John Chavis himself? Like as a defense coordinator, he pretty much been he's just been that guy to to coach a heck of a defense i mean you see it year in and year out on this squad i mean look at i mean they you guys sadly did lose a couple of your corners to the panthers like nate brooks who is sorely yeah. missed for sure um but just being able to coach new guys up and bring in new rotations of players and talent it's special and i'm bringing in taco charlton and just yeah that's, last he did a hat week. trick of sacks last week i mean Ooh. he's a special player yeah and just the development that he's put into this defense is is shown on the field for sure. And you guys yeah. have Neville Clark too. I like Neville Clark from the Breakers the last mm-hmm. two years. Just that was a, the flag on him. Not a good look, obviously, but yeah, still but, a really good player. Yeah. I look, contact was way too early there. Yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, honestly, you got to be tactical with it. Sometimes I was a tight end. You're not. That's going to be a hard guy to bring down. He catches that ball. They got to punch something in here. Keep it close. Yeah. If not, oh, pressure. Maybe in the a field goal. Uh, Vinny, was that a grab? Jeez. Vinny Papali having a nice little first Vinny half. Vinny Totep. All right. I think now I'm officially uh, behind you now. I'm official. I, I think so. Hold on. <laughs> what? That's so weird. I got to see this. Uh, it's a third and three. I'm on a third and three right now. Okay. You're ahead of me. You're ahead of me. Out routes. That was a bad ball. And oof. All right. It's officially fourth down. There, yeah, they're, he, they're, I, I take a shot here if I'm if I'm Memphis. Uh, it looks like they might bring in the kicking team. That's what, yeah, they're bringing uh-huh. in the kick team. Delphipio playing it safe. I respect it, yeah. but it's also, you have nothing really to lose. I mean, it's the end of the half. I, Try and tie it up here. I mean, Okay, so what what's well, like more the risk here we're like looking at with uh, if anything, um, because if they do go for it, they're gonna still be up by six scores. But I guess they're probably thinking like, okay, Birmingham. I think because I think they're still they trust their defense enough in the second half when the second half shows up. So they're probably yeah. like, hey, if we trust we trust our defense to to go get the stop in the second half. We were really still going to be up by three. We're not going to be worrying about being up by losing by nine points. If they uh, somehow, you know, kicking our field goal, at least at worst situation would be like, Hey, we're going to be up by six. If, if we're able to stop them. Yeah. Especially if Kaufman whiffs this, I, I don't know. Yeah. You're ahead of me. He probably nailed it. Yeah. It's right through. So 12 to 15. See if there's some uh, late second magic by the Stallions here. Yeah. Before we head into a- halftime. Adrian Martinez, uh, he's been uh, started one for four, but since then, eight for 11. So nine, nine of 15. That's pretty solid work for him. Like he's, I think that's probably what he needed because I think everyone was at first like very, very concerned because based on what the play we have seen so far from him hasn't really shown like, okay, is he, uh, is he going to be the guy or is he not? So I'm thinking, I, th- I think that's probably what Skip Holtz is going with. Like, Hey, we, I need to see, I need to see him get some reps. Like we he cannot just be more of the, uh, than just like running, than just run the football all the time, to- scramble, scramble every time when he's on the play. So, I mean, so I'm thinking we're finally gonna get him, hopefully finally cooking. We're gonna see him finally actually be a, I mean, we're a pretty it. decent quarterback. Yeah, we're, we're seeing it right now, man. He like you said, he started out rough, but he's turned into into form here. And 
this is probably the best quarterback play we've seen out of a Birmingham Science quarterback this year so far, to tell you the truth. I mean, well, I mean, their second half, Corral. I mean, but otherwise, that's about it. Corral, yeah, Corral's been very nice, good PFF scores and stuff like that. But, I mean, Adrian, Adrian Martinez, he brings the whole package with him. He, he's able to be very elusive on the ground, and he has a good zip on the ball as well. Like, yeah. I didn't, I slept on that attribute. I didn't really think he was a talented thrower of the ball, and I, I was proven wrong here. Mm-hmm. Two touchdowns in the first half, it's, it's a big deal. There you go. Number seven, maybe if we're able to get in field goal range, that would be – because right now we have three timeouts. Uh, so currently yeah. have three timeouts. So, I mean, anything could go on even if uh, Case Cook is decides – or, sorry, Adrian Martinez decides to uh, ru- just scramble for for a good amount of yards because we've seen him do that. Like, he's a guy that I can trust to uh, to give us a, a big – a big gain, so who knows what happens here. Skip is probably looking at it. He's thinking what would be the best play to handle unless their safest option would just be kneel down and just go ahead and uh, just start the half because we're about to head to halftime in about seven seconds. Maybe, I mean, do you think they take a shot? or uh, They're looking like they're going to take a shot. They're not They're not going to kneel it. I would Even then, I would probably take the shot, just do whatever you can, just to waste clock too. So, here we go. Deep ball pass by Martin. Oh! Wow! Wow. wow. Deion Kane. Deion Kane is a menace. Yep. Uh, USFL an- uh, champion MVP right there. That, that is absolutely correct. Like that tap. That toe tap. That, like, that footing. That is... <laughs> What a play. Like, I was maybe, like, at most just thinking, like, okay, they're probably going to do a Hail Mary, but at this point, just start bringing in Chris Bullitt. Bring in Chris wow. Bullitt at this point. Like, and 45-yard attempt. Here we go. To, to get the gain, to get the lead by six. The way Adrian Martinez layered that ball in there, that, he dropped it in a bucket. That was a beautiful yeah. throw. And, wait, right now, they're currently reviewing it. They're going to review it. Of course they are. That was a catch. That looked like that looked. Clean. That was uh, both of his feet were in one two. Yeah, dragged. He dragged the right. He dragged. He up and he had the other one. Yep, the second foot. Both both feet. Yeah, that's that's a catch. UFL. Come on, Mike P. Make the right call. Uh, he yeah, it, it's right your birthday today, way. man. It's your birthday. Make the right call. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw no. him with the cake earlier, so I was like, oh shoot. It's actually funny. It's my um, it's my little brother's birthday as well, and yeah. and Dan Campbell's birthday is a birthday. Wow, what a, Lord what a day! Yeah. Official review. Come on, give us give us the right just, call. Just you say the call. catch. You know it's a catch. At least the ref. Okay, the refing situation massively that. better. Oh, uh, like like last like in the NFL in both 2022, but specifically 2023. That was just, ah, oh, man. I, I'm going with a hot take here. The UFL has been right now entertaining so far than the than the UFL, than the NFL 2023 season. I'm, I'm going to say, like, I have no actual, like, geographical dog in this fight. I'm south of Tampa. There's no Tampa team. But just yeah. as a fan of the game, watching these games randomly, I'm not going to go watch the Bengals play – the the chargers you know and if i did i wouldn't have as much fun as i am right now watching the stallions yeah the show I, I just feel like it's more it's more for the viewer it's more for the audience it's it's less predicated on the over under or the stat line or like the businesses that's like the sponsors that i because i think that's what's kind of also like with the super bowl like one of its biggest problems because it's no longer just like for the fan it's just more like all right well which celebrity can we able to bring in? Can we bring in Leonardo DiCaprio? Can we bring in Taylor Swift? Can we bring in Mark Wahlberg? Let's make it a, a red carpet event, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, there are some fans who get tickets. Like, don't get me wrong. There are some fans, but it just felt like it's just now been like either you're only getting a Super Bowl ticket if you know somebody, you have the money for it, or, uh, or you win it in a contest. That's kind of like... How we're and looking at it right now. 
I know damn well I don't have sixty six grand for a ticket <laughs> or whatever. Or the ten grand, is. ten grand minimum at least. You need ten grand minimum for like the for the nosebleeds. I, I'm I, on one game. No, that's ten years worth of UFL games with the ten ten dollar tickets. Exactly, like, like even the Super Bowl when it was like in LA. Like, yeah, I'm like two, three hours away from the from SoFi. I was just like looking at the tickets. I'm like, no, even if it's like, oh, even though Eminem was going to be there, Dr. Dre and everyone else, I'm like, but it's like, that is like, that is at least 10 grand, eight grand minimum. And I'm like, and I'm on the nosebleed. So it's not even like, oh, is even worth it. I would rather just the full experience. I would rather rent an entire like room, like a ballroom or, or like a conference center bring a bunch of friends or a bunch of people that are actually Thanks. fans of, of the Super Bowl or fans of the game. You know, we order we order a bunch of pizza, we order a bunch of food, and then uh catered by I don't know somebody. Uh, uh what what that pizza place that uh that got cut that pizza place that they gave that pizza to uh to that one player that got cut by the Maulers. Oh um, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the 2022 season. Kirby, jo- what was the coach's name? Kirby Joseph. Kirby Joseph. Kirby, jo- Kirby Wilson. Kirby Wilson. Kirby Wilson. Sorry about that. Not the safety for the Lions, but <laughs> yeah. Kirby Wilson. Yeah. The- Jeez, man. He- that guy was a mess. But, Dude. Um, I mean, people did like root for him, but it was just like, dude, this man, like, this man felt like a lost cause out there. This, like, one in nine, like, Oof. he. His only one was against the gamblers. So it felt like that was like kind of for me with that little pain too when like the Stallions lost to the like gamblers, the only team that lost to the uh to the uh Pittsburgh Maulers that season. So it felt like wow, that felt kind of a little bit worse too. Because imagine that 12 imagine your first season as a new league again and then 12 and 0. That was your first beginning. It looks like he froze up. <laughs> Yo. I had, I, sorry, you were loading for a little bit. Um, some, had some tech issues. Yeah, I think both both of us kind of got, yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, it looked like a tech issue on both sides. Um, but, but uh, yeah, Kirby, like, even the game, we even, like, when we lost to the Gamblers the first time in 2022, there was like a little pain with it because it's like, wow, we lost to the team that lost to the to the Pittsburgh Maulers, which that was their only win of the season. So it just felt like, wow, like imagine starting your USFL season the revival with twelve and zero. Like that would have been epic. Yeah, that would have been. It would have been, and they had they had all the opportunity to go undefeated up until this stretch. To tell you the truth, they. Yeah. I mean, the Stallions. They're a great organization and. Honestly, after you know watching this first half, just brief notes here from me. Um, no run game from Memphis. I think negative three yards is their total. Um, Case Cookus, he can he's having a really good game, but they just need to protect yeah. him more, get Jay Adams and Vinny the ball more. But for the Stallions, keep doing what they're doing. Yeah. They're on pace to win this bad boy. Their defense Martin, is phenomenal. Martinez, you know, at first it was looking like it was going to be another uh, rough game for him, but so far he's finally kind of getting into the Skip Holtz like offense. He finally, I think they're finally kind of giving him like, hey, just relax, just do what you got to do. If you have an overthrow, that's fine. You know, just uh, go ahead, just relax a bit, and just do, just believe we're. Just see if you see a guy open, go ahead. Just and then if and you have an opening, building, go ahead. Bu- building confidence with him as well, like you were talking about earlier while we were watching the first half. I mean, the guy has not gotten many reps this year. I mean, the fact that he's played an entire first half and has led them to a pretty nice offensive outing in front of a decent, decent crowd, a more than decent crowd. I would say there's more than twelve thousand people there. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm. Looking forward to seeing Adrian Martinez moving forward, yeah. here, man. I mean, and the beautiful thing about it is this team, they can retain one of these guys. If one of them isn't performing up to par, like Matt Corral, if he's not going to play you know, 100% like we expected him to, he has an opportunity to come back next year and continue to develop his skills. Same with Adrian Martinez. Like, yeah. that's so beautiful about 
the beautiful thing about this league is it's not just going to be a one and done scenario. At least we hope knocking on wood, but you know, yep. it's, it's one of those things where if they're able to continue the development of players, the, this league is only going to get better and better. I mean, look at what we've seen from Adrian Martinez through three weeks. He went from night to midnight to, Oh wait, it's morning time now. I'm awake. You know? Yeah. So it's good to uh, see. So maybe that's where we're finally getting into. We're finally like seeing like Skip Pulse finally sticking to one man because he spent the entire half on the, he spent the entire half there. It's not like he, they put in Matt Corral just to like, all right, we're going to change it up, which I mean, don't get me wrong. I kind of see how the two uh, QB system could work, but I feel like I was just thinking like throughout today because I, like I was at work, but I kept thinking today like, man, like I'm going to see Adrian Martinez play. We're going to see how it goes, but I really want to see what is the uh, – what are they going to do? Are they like, I feel like the best way to get the two QB system working is like, Hey, you have one guy officially as QB one, but once in a while you, you will put in that, put in that other guy just to kind of show what, uh, what, what he has, or maybe just to show finally the, uh, finally what we got. So no. Yeah. I mean, showing what yeah. each player is capable of is always a good thing, especially cause skips trying to get all of his guys to the NFL. I know that's his true intention. Um, and, and this is a good way to do it, especially for a young quarterback like Adrian Martinez, who's putting putting up a really good game here so far. Yeah. Well. Um, but otherwise, this game, you know, I, I'm it's very exciting. I cannot wait to see what happens there. Uh I'm just, um, but you know, this is a very, this has been a very interesting first half. Very low scoring, yes, but otherwise, yeah. it's not been, uh, but otherwise, it's been a uh, very fun game. It's not like, you know, especially on, ch especially since it's Champions Night. Um, so, and I cannot also wait for the Stallions being at home again next week. You know, I thought this was going to be a bigger test, which it kind of is next week, but it's not as, as it was back in like oh, preseason where it was like, okay, we're going to go against the defenders where everyone was like, oh, well, well, we're going to like, they were going to go in and just take the uh, L overall. But hey, this time the Stallions are still showing the dominant team as they are right now. Um, and the defenders, although they've been iffy, but they could still probably put up a fight next week. So who knows what happens there? But week five is going to be a very crucial test for the USFL conference. And then week six, we go on the road again to face the Memphis Showboats. And then week seven, the game we all we all been waiting for, the Battlehawks. That's the game of the year, at least my game of the year. Uh, oh, that, that's game of the year for sure. Yeah, if, if, that, if we have an offensive performance from both sides of the ball, we are that will be fireworks. That will be the game we're going to uh see. Is it in St. Louis or protective? Uh, it's going to be at Birmingham, so that's a so, huge advantage for Birmingham, yeah. And that's what I was kind of hoping for. Uh, I, that's what I was hoping for. Uh, for, for the game to be at St. Louis, I really that was the one time I was like, if that game's at St. Louis. I really want the Stallions to put up a show because, because if we come out of St. Louis at uh, with a win, that would be that would be the most satisfying thing to watch. Probably also the most dominant spring, like nail in the coffin, no questions, if ands or buts. The best spring football team ever yeah. if they're able to do that. Even just win, winning the championship this year solidifies that. But yeah. If they beat St. Louis at St. Louis in the championship game, that's a hell of a scenario that I'm going to dream about later tonight. And yeah. To tell you the truth, that sounds if pretty, that, pretty yeah. cool. If that happens in the championship game, we both, St. Louis and Seattle and Birmingham meets up, that would be uh, – and Birmingham goes in with the win – that would be basically the old the, – we basically not only solidify ourselves at the dynasty, we basically just kind of showed everyone in the entire spring league that the Birmingham Stallions are the best team they are, of they all are, time. They, they, they will be the best team of all time in the yeah. spring league era. 
No, because, absolutely. Because doing that right there, like going into one of the biggest home field, into one of the biggest, uh, biggest stadiums or biggest fan bases in the United in the United Football League, like doing, you are pretty much. That is pretty much king right there. You pretty much just kind of <laughs> proved to everyone in the world that hey, we are, we are, we are that guy. Yeah, no, I mean, you said it perfectly. That's just king. That's king yeah. status if they're able to. It, just again, yeah. three peat in its own. I'm still calling it a three peat. Um, would be, you know, all the yeah. evidence you need to sit here and say, you know, this is the best spring football team that's ever been put on a field even dating yeah. back to the 80s, XFL 1.0, 2.0, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Bring up a team, the Stallions are, are up there. And, you know, if they – if heck, if they go for a fourth year in a row, if Skip stays for a fourth year, that's just even more legacy yeah. built up. But um, I'm sure, obviously, he's going to pan out his options after yeah. this season. He's going to be a yeah. highly touted head coach. I I think uh you know he was going to get offers for net was he going to get an offer for Northwestern and then uh after that uh he was like no I'm going to stay in Birmingham which I was like oh thank god yeah uh, no, I mean he is a he's an awesome head coach you can tell he cares yeah. about his players just like I was talking about John DeLafitte yeah. his passion is is so bright I mean he he wants to win and wants to succeed week yeah. in and week out um but that's that's what you want out of your head coach. I mean, and that's yeah. why we get the results and, we do with the Stallions. And the way he talks to his players, like on the sideline, he's not like being a hard case where it's just like, like I mean, I don't mind hard cases sometimes, but it's just like it just feels like, hey, you were talking to him like a normal human being, like a, like hey, like yes, we all make mistakes, so we're just gonna hey, just move on. Like it gave me like that Pete Carroll aura. Now, I think mm. that's what kind of like dragged. I think that's kind of what gave me like that energy he's like hey like yes he's gonna get frustrated he's gonna get annoyed like any other coach is but hey he's gonna tell his players just hey relax this is we still have plenty of game left we're still gonna we're still gonna go ahead and defeat this team just just relax and then just just forget and just move on just go on to the next play oh i i agree with that i mean that's he has a short memory um and that's a good thing to have as a player and a, and a coach. Um, yeah. They're talking to him now at halftime. Um, right. But he's won nine consecutive games. This is going to be, if they win the night, 10, 10 in a row. Um, yeah. It's a huge deal. I, have they lost to Protective? Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, oh, this season, no. But last season, yeah, with the Gamblers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but it's bringing a witch. I'm bringing another guest along, you know, uh, he, you know, we, you know, we've been, uh, talking before, you know, we've been friends for a while, but, uh, let me introduce you to Gavin, everybody. Uh, let's bring him to the stage. What's up? Welcome to the show. First time ever. <laughs> like everyone else, I guess. First time ever. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. What's up? Yeah. Let's... Can, can you? Can you guys hear me okay? Oh yeah. yeah, for sure. Clear, clear as day. Okay, cool. Thank, thank you for having me. Um, for the record, I also am delayed, um, kind of throughout this game. Like I, I I'm like one play behind, but <laughs> should be fine. You know, let me, let me try to fix my camera so you guys can see me. Yeah. That's no, pretty. we're good. We're but, good yeah, right now. It's definitely been like a closer game than I thought. Understand? Oh yeah, no, he's I a Battlehawks fan. By the way, he was a Sea Dragons fan. Because, oh, he lives in that area, but mainly um, he is a he is overall a he is a St. Louis Battlehawks fan this season until the Sea Dragons come back. Respectable, respectable. And honestly, they looked really good after last week's win. I, I do like AJ McCarron. He looked like a like a different man out there in the fourth quarter, slicing and dicing that defense up. Oh, Dion Kane. Is a god right now. <laughs> he is. This is actually this is actually like the first uh, UFO game that I've watched um, this this season. Um, I haven't had time because I've just been I've just been working, but no, this is definitely like a really good game to like watch. Were you? I mean, yeah. Um, who who did you have in this game, Gavin? 
Uh, def- definitely the Stallions. Uh, I mean, the fact that they're 2-0 and and they're, like, crushing it right now. I mean, even though they're, like, struggling against Memphis, which, by the way, that's actually, like, a beautiful pass on first down to the toe tap. Perfect. Um, wow. But, <laughs> yeah, that was a perfect throw. Um, but, no, definitely, like, his – like, I've definitely been rooting for the Stallions so far. <laughs> Defenders, exactly. Which, again, I, I'm not even sure how they won that game. They were getting their ass kicked. <laughs> they definitely I, I think, feel, you know, definitely I mean, should not have lost. I guess. Oh, Renegades. Yeah. I guess speaking of other games, let's kind of also talk a little about tomorrow's games right now. Uh, I guess we have the Houston Roughnecks going to Michigan for the third home game of the season, which I still find it weird that Michigan's actually going to get the had three home games in a row this season. So um, we'll see what happens. What are y'all thoughts about this uh, about the game coming up for tomorrow? I'm probably going to wind up. I don't know. It's hard to say. That's a really even game if Reed's in that starting, in my opinion. But I'm actually going to go with the Roughnecks here. Michigan has a far – I don't know. Their defenses are so equivalent. But I just think that Reed's and that's a better quarterback than EJ Perry. Right now, I just haven't seen the magic that I saw last year out of EJ. So until that happens, I'm going to take the Roughnecks in their first win tomorrow. Mm. Uh, I am – well, if you saw if not, uh, I am going to pick the Michigan Panthers for this game. I, I just can't. I just can't bet them against them at home at the moment. They're, you know, uh, I just feel like, yeah, and I just feel like they're right. Like, if I have to trust at least someone at the moment, I feel like I trust Michigan. Um, I I just don't know. And especially if you have a kicker like that, who's going to keep on kicking like 60 yarders, um, I'm going to pick the Panthers. Oh, 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 pass interference. I have mass view for the Panthers at this point. <laughs> for obvious reasons. Oh. <laughs> Trevor, you're muted. Like, whatever you were saying, we're not here. <laughs> oh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I, was co- I was typing in our comment section in there, but I, oh. I said, don't hate on Jack Bates, man. He's a legend. Dude, I'm not like- hating on him, but like. I'm He's pissed. just mad about week one. He's mad about week <laughs> one about that last drive. No, that was I not fair. You. I don't blame you. And you guys, I mean, you guys are in the top four, in my opinion, after after last week. I just I just still want to see a little more consistency out of the defense, especially letting Arlington score that much. But mm. um no, I still have high hopes, especially if you guys are at home, you were dang near unbeatable. I, I mean 40,000 people. Yeah, no kidding. That's, also, that's I do crazy. not I, I do not agree with the call with the whole like, like offset penalty. I, th- I feel like, like the pass interference should have been accounted for more. That that was complete BS. May have been the worst call of the day so far. Like, what was it? that? Number number 14 on defense. Yeah, green, buddy. <laughs> there we go. Adrian Martinez. Oh, oh, voting the sack. Ah. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are definitely going to be able to play, play ahead of me. I watched the first down run that went for negative one yards. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm, I'm lined up with you. I'm lined up with you, Gavin. Yeah, okay. I, I'm, I'm the only one that's ahead so far. Um, <laughs> by, by, by ten seconds. I'm trying to like hold my excitement, in, but I just can't. Like <laughs> seeing each uh, big play, I'm like, like I, I gotta do it. I no, gotta, no, I, do your, do your thing, sad. man. Do your thing. Yeah. I'm just hoping this. Okay, one of the other reasons I do want to bring San Diego to a team is, is I could finally see in the UFL game or Spring League game like in the area. Finally, like that's one thing I want to see. But obviously, right now the nearest one for me is San Antonio. So, um, uh, which technically the Birmingham Sounds are actually going to play in San Antonio week uh, week nine. So we'll see what are happens you gonna make there. A, are you going to try and get out there? Uh, unfortunately not, and it's gonna be kind of around closer to graduation time, so I'm gonna gonna say uh, pass. True. So yeah, hopefully they um, win for you, and congratulations to your what graduation. What was that obviously. Bro. Yeah, uh, finally gonna finish college. So which is not, <laughs> I don't know how to feel. School's out. 
I'm I'm probably gonna say this, like I have been telling everyone, like when it hits August or September, I'm still gonna think like I'm gonna have class for because like you know I've been in school pretty much throughout, or like everyone like been in school pretty much a good majority of their lives, like so it's like a good amount of their lives, so it's kind of like gonna be hard for me to adjust to see what happens there. So. But. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, look on the bright side. Come, uh, you know, August and September, you know, football, football, football will be coming back, so you have more time to watch games and stream or whatever. Well, let's see. We'll see what happens, but yeah, uh, especially, actually, especially with you know um, work and all that. Yeah. So just kind of, I just kind of see what's gonna what's gonna go on uh, during this summer because it's gonna be uh, another like like the UFL, a uh, very pinnacle point for what it is. So. So let's see what happens, but I am excited to see uh, the Giants in September because I am actually going to go to, oh, well, again, a team I've been, a city I've been pretty much talking about to see the Padres. So oh. Padres versus Giants. So I am, I am excited to see what happens there. So, but yeah. Oh, we got a. Do it, buddy. You're muted again. <laughs> Sorry again. Just background <laughs> noise. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for having me on, but I am gonna Here, probably hop go. off if you don't mind, boss. All right, man. You know, I, I got you have you have a little brother's birthday. You got to do what you got to do. You know, I, I understand. And you know. really awesome two hours, dude. Keep up your hard work, and mm, thank you. uh, yes. you're welcome on anytime. Uh, Seriously, thank you, man. Uh, uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, so for everyone who's still, who's you're here new or who barely hopped on, uh, this is uh Trevor Bosser. He is uh currently uh with Tea Time Reports. You know their channel is overall great. They do a lot of spring football content there. They do football content. They do a lot of other uh various things like film, like music. So uh, come check their channel on YouTube. You can check them out on X. Check it out on Instagram slash Threads. Check it out on their Apple Podcast, Amazon Music. Whichever platform is there, they'll be there. Hey, man. Thank you so much. You guys have a You're great welcome. night. Let's go. Oh, you down. too, buddy. Right. Take care. Have a good night. Take care. <laughs> All right. Here we, here we are. Just us about two. To, uh, um, ab about to watch Case Cookies, you know, former Philadelphia Stars, which was my team until, you know, both of my teams mm -hmm. got out. So <laughs> I don't have a team to root for. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. Now I am a Battle Hawks fan, and like I'm definitely, I, I'm. It's weird being a Battle Hawks fan after you know being a Sea Dragons fan for in the past, you know. Season. I honestly thought you were gonna be a Showboats fan because I was thinking like, bro, if he, yeah, I thought you were gonna ride with Cookus. I thought you were gonna ride. I with was Cookus, thinking man. about it, but like, I don't remember. Like, um, I think it was, um, damn it, who, um, uh, who's the guy who was also a, um, a, 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 a Battle Hawks fan in in the in the server. I forgot his um, name. I'm looking I, right now. I I only, only know Lightning Juniors uh, uh defenders. We have a couple we have a couple defenders uh fans right here. Uh ooh, oh showboats pretty much wow with the with that jet sweep right there and a flag on the play. And yeah, and you're also playing ahead of me, so I'm not sure what the hell's going on. There's yeah. this guy out the huddle. But my team has No, like I, I was uh, like thinking about it, but like being a Battle Hawks fan was, was just like funny. I mean, I'm, I mean, I like when it comes to St. Louis, like I love the city and the fact that they got screwed over by both like the Rams, Cardinals, and I guess, also, I guess all the, the Chargers. Like they didn't really have a football team anymore. And having the Battle Hawks was like, like they're like, they're, they're famous, really passionate about it. As yeah. you see, you know, they, you know, they're for Omar, they have 40,000 yeah. people in attendance. I so mean, that their, is their fans right. are definitely um, very, very passionate. Yeah, no, I, I get it. I, uh, I mean, like, I don't, I don't blame that fan base. That fan base is kind of like a Buffalo Bills slash Detroit. Lo I mean, I mean, in yeah. terms of passion, we're going like, yeah, that is definitely. I mean, they're pretty much a table away from, from pretty much becoming that. So we'll see. Oh, oh, safety. Nope. <laughs> that we're gonna safety. I thought I was like, All right, I'm ready for the two points again. Nope. No, 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 no. We're, we're not. We're, we are not doing that. We're not 42 to two. It's sadly. No, I, this dude, is why I miss it. Todd Haley. This is why I miss Todd Haley because this man would, you know, this man would give us 40 points a game. This man would would come there, but would would get there. You know, this man. This man was a was is a is a stallion 
by honor because he, you know, he gave us wins as a ten- when he was a Tampa Bay Bandit and as a Memphis Showboat. Those two seasons were epic because he gave us he gave us that he gave Stallions wins. Off, yeah, that was an offsides. Yeah, that was. Oh, but a fumble. It could have been a fumble. That could have been a fumble for a touchdown. But that no. also looked like a little bit of a um, face mask in the end zone. If if that yeah. was called, ooh, that was bad. And Cook is slowly oh, getting up. Yeah. But, um, what was they gonna say? Oh yeah, um, Arlington, zero and three. I think I think their playoff chances are like next to none. I, that's I, I, what I uh, that's what Trevor was saying like earlier because he's saying like the the Renegades might be done. Like I get it, we saw the slow start in the in the XFL, but this is no longer just the XFL. You're no longer playing the Vegas Vipers. You're no longer playing the uh, Orlando Guardians twice a year. You are now playing the with the big boys. You're playing against the Birmingham Stallions. You're playing against the um, you're playing against the uh, Michigan Panthers, whose defense is going to be rough. The San Antonio Brahmas has Wade Phillips, who's legendary head coach. They're not. They could be three and zero tomorrow. Let's see how you know. Let's see how that game goes. But they're they're showing everything what they can do. Oh, offsides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah that was earlier, but right now, buddy. What are you doing? I'm I'm hoping his brother actually shows up to that Houston game because you know he won you know he's the twin brother if you know Khalil Davis is the twin brother, Carl's Davis right there. You know, he was the Birmingham Stallions, I believe, for both seasons. Uh but that man Ooh. was a beat. Ooh, yeah, Cook is Damn. Yes, Cook is his game bully. Fine. Like I I like that man's durability, he's on 99 Madden overall. That is some 99 overall durability right there. Also, um, I I was looking at your um your your wide receivers. I saw that like you got that you guys have Packers legend um, Amari Rogers. Like he was a yeah. best Packers receiver like back in the game. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, hey, we brought in Gary Jennings. He was a Seahawk. Gary, we brought mm-hmm. and. I remember cutting up. They cut him in the off season, and then after yeah. he went, he went to Miami. I remember he went to Miami right after, and then eventually he did find himself into the XFL with the St. Louis Battlehawks, oh, and then you know so on so forth. He's now a stallion after a whole controversy between him between Beck and the XFL, even though he legit signed with the Panthers in twenty twenty four in twenty twenty three. But then obviously he got cut in the off season, you know. <laughs> but hey. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, the sack? No, no, the return. Oh, bro, dude, I, I'm currently watching the replay. What a punt. Yep. Cam the bot. Ah. <laughs> so this guy uh, on the comments, Cam the bot, he is a 49ers fan, unfortunately. Oh, brother. Brother, yeah, but but he's a cool one. He's a cool Forty oh, ers fan, so 40, he's not 40, like 50, a forty-five. 40. Damn, that was actually a really really good return. Shit. Wait, we have a flag. No, oh. we got a. Flag. Dude, that reminds me this morning I was playing him. Madden and like I had an insane return, and then like the last like two yards was like a block in the back, and I was pretty pissed. Like son of a bitch. Yeah. But I mean, um, but this UFL season has been exciting. Yes, yeah, some of these were pretty low scoring, but I mean, these games have been have been very fun to watch, and the ref and the refing been top tier, better than the NFL, better than we have seen the NFL for the past few years. That's what I'm saying. Like, um, I mean, we I need mean, Skybox. Right I, mean, like, I mean, like, like right there, like watching the watching the the replay on the hit on like on Cookies. Yeah. There's- Definitely a, a hold in the end zone. That was yeah. not called. And not and crazy. not only that, they're not taking like ten minutes or five to ten minutes just to look at one play. Like Mike uh Pereira or Dean Blandino is just like, Oh yeah, that's uh yeah, we see right there, like in the corner, yeah, that's a that's an incomplete pass. Don't don't call it a complete, and that's it. That's why I love the sky judge. We need the sky judge in the NFL, just something like yes. that. 
And remember, I mean, remember the, if if you remember X of all twenty twenty, I remember they had Sky Judge, and there was like that whole uh, Xbox remote or something like that. I yeah, I mean, I think something that the NFL should take out of like um like the USF like the UFL book, and like I'm not sure if the UFL does it because like you know I haven't watched any games the first one I watched, but because like, frequently I haven't muted. They should like mic up just like every player and just like it's just like, have it that way because like that shit's funny. <laughs> I, I mem- remember last season, um, like I'm like I'm pretty sure like the, the quarterback was like trying to play and and like I'm not sure if it him or a receiver, but someone said shut the fuck up. I'm like this is amazing. Like like Dude, where is this in the NFL? I honestly think they'll probably make like the NFL more T- TV 14 or TVMA or not more TV 14 than really anything because like remember remember the uh, Nickelodeon wildcard game. <laughs> Nickelodeon game. <laughs> Like I know it's technically CBS, but like if you're watching it from the Nickelodeon perspective, it's like, oh yeah, like let's let's get what kids to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> and then like we also have some big ones from the ESPN one, like Sam Darnold. It's like, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I think I saw ghosts, man. Dude, the ghost <laughs> thing, um, um, the uh. What was it? Dude. Manning cast where like where like where, like, where um, fucking Eli was like you know was like you know doing this. I'm like whoa, yeah. buddy. <laughs> Dude, like honestly, they like this is this is why I feel like there's at some point we need, just need YouTubers as commentators. I'm not saying it's gonna be a. I'm not saying they're gonna do. I'm not saying like it's gonna be great, but I'm just saying it would be a fun perspective just to see like, oh yeah, fan commentation for the like because we see Grassy doing it, we see Perna mm-hmm. doing it. Like, I mean, tree, like, they, you know, like when it comes to Tree, like you know, he like he's like the one guy who who has no filter, and it's amazing. Yes, and I feel like it's just something like, all right, like I am tuning into the game, but I'm just hearing like I'm just hearing one of them like, and they bring out a better. I, I'm not saying like the um, the announcers, the commentators have been terrible. Why was I'm he not so saying, wide open? What the wait, hell? What? Jay Sternberger. Oh my! Dude. What? A, Dude, did you see the first? Amazing. Wait, 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 did you see that first that touchdown pass day. by Martinez? Wait, did you see that first touchdown pass Martinez like early in that mm-hmm. game? Dude, like yeah. Jay Sturmer just looked like, oh yeah, let me. Bro, he was just, like, like he it. was wide open. There was nobody around him. Dude, and it looked like it was about to be like an overthrow, but he was just like, nah, I, I, I got it, I got it, man, I got it. Now, like I'm just saying, Jay Sturmer is the best tight end in that league. Like, I mean, there's other ones, but yeah. But 14, 14 first downs by the Stallions. I am impressed. This is better when I – this is I, at least it's been having a better game than what I saw last week, although we did get the win. But the offense – oh, that could, that was a fa- – that I think that looked like a face mask there. But, nope, uh, Adrian Martinez avoided it, and we got ourselves a first down. I, I mean, I'm currently looking at the stats, bro. Memphis has four rushing yards. It's like the, like the yeah. The there is Victor. There is Victor has exactly. been disappeared, and it's mainly because the offensive line cannot do anything. Like if whoa, we're seeing, whoa, whoa, okay, not whoa, okay for one. Uh, like I'm like like good job for the quarterback getting out of that. But like, um, if like you go if you go to replay that number nine was offsides, like blatantly offsides. How that wasn't called, I got no idea. Yeah, wait on Memphis or on um, Birmingham. I was on, like, on Memphis. I was like, how do you call all sides on a on a QB? Bro, fucking dude, you remember um Chiefs? Remember uh, the Titans? Uh, oh. um, uh, uh, Tony like all sides and Mahomes just like oh yeah, bitch fit. Oh yeah. <laughs> Beautiful run. That would be a horse call. It, it would look like it was going to be, but no. Uh, but second down and twelve. Not now. gonna lie, that um, um, that play kind of reminds me of. Uh, remember when um, Ryan Fitzpatrick was on the uh, Dolphins? And, uh, oh the yeah, Raiders, and like he like his face man was was like grabbing, and he just like chucked that shit up, and like got like a mad somehow got game. caught. Yeah, that it somehow got gained, and the Dolphins won that game. I thought the they, Dolphins were going to make the playoffs at that point. Or dude, the, un- <laughs> the best part is next week they pay the Bills and got their ass beat. I'm like, well, like that- the one, the one part I was hoping that the that the Dolphins would have made the playoffs that season under Ryan Fitzpatrick. 
Martinez throw the ball, please. Uh, we'll see. But Champions Night 23. Hang on. Please hold. There you go. There but how's everybody doing tonight? Um, uh, you know, um, I think this has been a, I think this has been overall one of the better shows that, uh, one of the better shows uh, I had in a while. So, by the way, where the heck is Matt Corral? Well, oh, I mean, all right, hear me out. I mean, yes, do we want to see Matt Corral? Yes, but also think about it in a sense. We finally got a, we're finally, uh, we're finally seeing a one quarterback in the, one quarterback in the. We're finally seeing one quarterback in the in the and under center. That's that's probably what I like at least that what I like about it the most that we have one quarterback under center. Now we're now like okay, we're gonna put in two two drives, Matt Corral, and then after that two drives, uh, Adrian Martinez. But I mean, how? But at least at the end, they're both technically rookies. Like not only in the UFL, but as professionals, like as as a professional football league, this is basically both are rookie seasons. So like we were, I mean, it was expected at least to have some growing pains. So, so we'll see what happens. Martinez has been cooking. I ain't going to cap, but still have to keep up with the meme with the golden corral. I guess, I guess you're not wrong. I mean, he would, uh, he's giving out passes. Like he's giving out, like someone's giving out mashed potatoes at, at golden corral. <laughs> Honestly. All right. Has anyone been to Golden Crown? Like, I really want to know what is like your thoughts and opinions. I've never been to it. I'm just like wandering. Like, I just know it's a buffet, and that's all. I that's all I that's all I know. But, but I'm thinking about the next time if I do a game. Um, uh, hey, let me. Not gonna lie, I've never been there. Hmm. Uh, but all right. I was gonna say like oh next if if I do another live stream sometime soon, uh I'm just trying to think who should I who should I bring in next for guests because uh I mean this has overall been a success uh successful 100%. Like 100. better at least better than what I expected earlier. I was seeing like I know there's only gonna be like like only like one viewer out seeing like or no viewers at all. But hey, we everyone's been here, you know, like so far. Like you know, logic came out for a comment, so just uh, oh yeah, banners. Huh? I saw that. Um, uh, that that uh, the uh, sounds kicked a field goal. Uh, good job. Mm -hmm. Also, the the reason why I beat myself into my camera off because my dad walked inside, so I kind of yeah. had to. Didn't you know. speaking? I'm not even supposed to be on stream right now. Like I'm currently using the computer, which I'm not supposed to be using. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Which like which, like which is why I asked if you do stream labs because you know it's it's on my phone and like it'll just be you know I'll, it'll just be a a lot easier to like uh, just to hide. Yeah, but maybe actually that would not be a that would not be a bad idea. Maybe. No, one hundred percent. Just gotta see who would be interested. I just gotta just uh again just uh, DM just DM me uh just uh just DM me and let me know what's up. I'll. Uh, well, obviously, I'll announce a live stream uh, first, and then you know I'll start thinking about bringing guests along. Maybe obviously it's gonna be like maybe like a few people, but yeah. Man, I cannot wait for St. Louis versus Memphis. Oh yeah, uh, for anyone who wants to know, uh, this is uh, Lightning Junior. Is um, you know he has he's overall he's over on TikTok. He's on YouTube. He's currently trying to do YouTube. His first stream is gonna be next week. Um, against with Memphis versus St. Louis, obviously I'll, I'll try to chime into his stream, uh, but it's going to be, but it's going to be an early morning game. So we'll, I'm going to, I'm going to attempt, but, uh, but you know, check out his stream is going to be early in the morning. If you're all in the West coast, but if you're in the East coast, it's going to be in the afternoon, obviously. So, uh, I just trying to remember what time the game is. So that's kind of the, that's why I'm trying to figure that out. But, but anyway, check out his content. Follow him. Follow him on X. Follow him on uh, follow him on TikTok. You know, uh, let me see next week's games. We have um, next week's game. We have the I, oh nine thirty. Okay, so nine thirty a.m. Pacific, twelve thirty p.m. Uh, a twelve thirty p.m. game. So if you're around that time, 
Go ahead, catch up a stream, comment, whatever. Do what you got to do. Um, uh, but you know, since since you know we're since we're already talking about the Battle Hawks, what are your thoughts for this tomorrow's game against the uh, San Antonio Brahmas? Brahmas, you know, they came they came back from a uh, sixteen point deficit. They scored twenty unanswered points. The Battle Hawks got their first win of the season after a. Uh, rough start in week one against Michigan. So uh, yeah. what are your thoughts right now? What are your thing? What's going to happen for this game? Um, Currently, I'm here. Let me double check the uh, the things. Like, and I, I haven't watched UFL until like really today. So I'm really, really behind. Yeah. So, I mean, um, I mean, Brahma's are currently two and O. So like, that's definitely going to be a problem. Especially uh, since Wade Phillips is the head coach right now. Chase Garbers has been showing that he could be the QB, so we'll see what happens there. Yeah, um, I definitely, I definitely, like, you know, um, like, I would not, I, I, a win is definitely what I want, but I can see the Battlehawks maybe losing by, like, three points again, just, like, off of, like, a complete BS field goal. Yeah. I just saw Case Cookers just got like slammed into the ground, like sacked, but just the way it happened. Like I, I he's getting Daniel Jones to Monday Night Football right now. <laughs> yeah, week five, baby. Week oh, four, but no. yeah, we. But I, dude, that five sacks, five sacks for Case Cookus on Case Cook. Wow. That man, I, I think I would. I he's he's getting Russell Wilson. He's getting Geno Smith. Like, dude, this is. I just keep thinking Geno. Remember week one, just like the oh Geno Smith God. sound. Bun. Dude, I'm I'm happy that he's gone. I, he's gone. Oh, he's, me too. Aaron Donald, no, no more. I I know dude, we have to deal with Nick Bosa or whoever Arizona, whoever Arizona drafts in the future. But for now. Just for five minutes, for the next few, hopefully, just for next season, we don't really have to deal with. We don't have to deal with Aaron Donald for for a moment. Your reaction to that sack was <laughs> right. Yeah, Max, bro. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but this has been a fun game. This oh, is 100%. this has been fun. I, I don't care what the score is. This has overall been. Oh. This has overall been a great. This has been a great night, or at least great afternoon. Nick Bosa, hey, 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 Charles Cross is gonna own Nick Bosa next season. Abe Lucas is gonna own Nick Bosa next season. <laughs> Buddy, here's here's the thing. I myself a Seahawks fan. Even I don't believe that. I'm terrible. Uh, you think like me even saying that right now? I'm I'm just that's why I'm laughing because I'm laughing because I know I know what I'm saying is just like it's just false hope. It's just it's just I mean Charles Cross is a great left tackle. He is he is a great left tackle. Don't get me wrong. Ooh, kitty. I have a kitty. But I, I I'm just saying we're. Well, I'm just saying. I, I'm just hoping I Charles do. Cross does not like just just at least does his best to take down Bosa or a Lucas. Whoever is whoever's lined up against him next season, like whoever's lined up throughout the game, I'm like, just please hold on. Jets versus Seahawks this season. Um, let's just see how the hopefully the schedule is right for us, like because uh, I re- I guess that's a game where I really want to. I want to do a live stream for sure with with him. Jets versus Seahawks, especially the history behind both teams. Surprisingly, like it's kind of weird. Like you're thinking, like of all teams that like you would not really have much history with, it would be the Jets. But yet somehow Seattle well, does it. Well, the funny thing is, like the history of the Jets. Obviously, you know the whole thing with um the. Jamal Adams trade, and then now... Um, yeah, oh, before that, even then, Pete Carroll, too. He was a Jets. Pete, yeah, Pete, Pete, Carroll, Pete Carroll was the, the Jets head coach, and and now we have, you know, Gino being a former Jet. and George Fan coming back to Seattle after George being Fan a Jet. Thing. 
um, we, we we got the whole controversy with uh, Wollen and and like you know Sauce, Sauce. Dwayne, Dwayne Brown here, what like, played for both squads. Lightning, I, I know you're in the chat, but like Tariq Wollen is better, and he was robbed at a defensive review. <laughs> I, I'm calling it. I'm calling it now. Uh, I'm calling it now. No, 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 no. Agree, agree. <laughs> Need your thoughts on Brock Purdy right now? All right, all right. All right. I don't hate Brock Purdy. Ooh, I just I like as well. okay. Hear me. Out. I don't hate him. I'm just I wasn't a fan of the media just hyping it up during his rookie season. Hear me out. It's a great story. I, I'm not saying it isn't, but for the fact that they gave him an offensive rookie oh of the year nomination, God. it what? Wait, w- Ricky Pierce. That? Ricky Pierce. What? My guy, that was like that was yeah. clean. Okay. Uh. Anyways, that was behind <laughs> him as well. Like, w- yeah. Way, way to read that. <laughs> yeah. Like, and he's a running back too. Like, uh, like he's that. He's like, yeah. If you don't have CJ Marble, you also have Ricky Person. Like, another man to be to keep an eye out. So. But it's about to be the end of the third quarter. On, oh, I'll, I'll talk about the what I was gonna say earlier. Oh, what a pass by by Adrian Martinez to number eighty. So to Austin Jr. But really all right, anyways. Uh, so, so back to Brock Purdy. That's where it was. Okay, I wasn't really a fan of like the media just putting him for an offensive rookie of the year nomination because he was the only good rookie QB that season and he, even though he only played like five games that was kind of like my entire beef otherwise i don't really mind him like i am just gonna am gonna talk smack because you know i'm seahawks fan obviously so but i mean for what it is he's still i mean he is a good quarterback am i top five no but maybe no. maybe top 10 maybe mm-hmm. top 10 well, up uh, for now, maybe top fifteen. Top fifteen, you can argue. Yeah, but sure. but in the future, he he may be top ten if he starts. If he's uh, if he's uh, look, if he's like slinging the ball. If we're getting more of that like MVP, you know, the supposed MVP, than yeah. just you know we're getting that CMC. Uh, then everyone's saying CMC, which I'm saying CMC could at least got a nomination for uh, yeah, MVP. But it was you know. And like maybe I'm a little salty, but like, I mean, I mean, as a Seahawks fan, I'm also a Bengals fan. So watching Lamar win his second MVP was so stupid. He did not deserve that. No, um, the QB like, did. He, like he had the most like mid stats, but like CMC should have won it. Maybe Josh Allen should have won it. Tyreek argue arguably. Ty- Tyreek definitely could like should have won it. I mean, the only other receiver that like, could have won it w- would have been Jefferson, but like he got hurt and like weeks like what, 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 four or five, so uh, he was out for a good chunk of the season. Yeah. So, well, I mean, I'm I'm hoping. Uh, uh, let's see what happens for this year's awards. I mean, the funniest award. I mean, that season was comeback for the year award. That was peak comedy. We were all waiting for what was going to happen. Because you and I were both there witnessing the reaction because we were like, oh, wait till, wait till, uh, wait till like DeMar Hamlin gets the award. We're all like, okay. Like we saw Joe Flacco, yes, got like the nomination. Matthew Stafford got a nomination. Baker got a nomination. Got a nomination, yep. Yeah. And we're like, all right, just give it to DeMar and we're, you know, we'll just be on our way after that. It was like, comeback player of the year, Joe Flacco. I'm like, what? The, you know, so the, the best part about that was the fact that um to, to pronouncing him was um was Mr. Like no uh Tom Brossi himself, which was like you know, yeah. which was massive for all of us to watch. Um e like even though they actually like even even though they even though they, they butchered his name, which was fucking hilarious. Yeah. Free Saul was snubbed Saul for definitely was snubbed. Yeah, he actually, yeah, he still like even when they brought him down with Cook, he was still like, "I'm still the guy." Just he was just like he was basically like, "Sit down, buddy, yank the guy." Even though they're gonna push you so much to be the guy, I'm the guy. Don't even, don't even begin. And then after that, they cut him, and then now he went to Baltimore. Dalvin Cook went to Baltimore, and then after that, you know, he he could have won us. He could have made the Super Bowl, but no, he. 
<sighs> Lamar Jackson was not the guy. Lamar Lamerica, Captain Lamerica. Ah, uh, the black hole sun memes. That was a uh, that was something. I mean, like, I am still so fucking bitter about the Super Bowl. Like, I put fifty of my goddamn dollars on the fucking 49ers. I'm Dude, still pissed off. Why would you even? Like, oh, Dion like, can't I, I almost get it. Like, I get it. Division rival. You don't want him to win. I'm fucking sick of the Chiefs. Like, I'm legit sick of the Chiefs. I would much rather have my most hated rival win the goddamn Super Bowl than the Chiefs ever winning. Dude, I, I, I just looked at. I looked more in the optics. I looked in the optics right there. I was like, I knew to pick the Chiefs. I am not betting. It's like the Patriots. Remember the past? Like, remember the Patriots and like. Like the even like for every year, everyone was like, "Oh, the Patriots not going to go to the Super Bowl this year." Like even like they look like they had one of the weaker rosters. But guess what? They made the Super Bowl and won it. So you don't understand the pain I have for the Chiefs. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, Ricky Pearson with the TD, twenty-seven yeah, to well. twelve. Now. I'm like I'm pretty sure that the, um that very well might back to the dagger. That twenty, yeah. If you're getting blown out, if you're if you're up by like wait, two score, it's still technically two scores since it's a fifteen point game at the moment. But yeah, that when you see the scoreboard, it just looks like that's gonna be the end. It's, even if like the stallion somehow. Yeah, well, but then again, I'm not gonna say anything until the clock hits zero, because we saw what happened last week. And we just saw what happened like earlier today. So I am not gonna say anything until we see zero 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 on the clock. Because they're still fourth and twelve. It's no longer just like oh the onside kick. And well, well, yeah. Well, like well we'll also look at it this way. Remember, remember you know, uh in the fourth quarter, um zero fifty one, it was it reached a point where where this where the score was, you know, twenty to nine, and then you know we and then after that, you know, we we all know all know what happened afterwards. But like, but at the same time, like, it's also the Patriots and Tom Brady, and nobody ever questions Patriots and Tom, Patriots and Tom Brady. Well, anymore. Hmm. Any given weekend, uh, yeah, I guess for this one, it would be any given weekend. Uh, Though I would laugh so fucking hard if the Stallions choke this lead. I would laugh so hard. You, your guys, I want your asses on that fraud couch immediately. At that point, I, you deserve the fraud it, couch. It, it's, it's more of a chair at this point. It's more of a chair <laughs> than really anything. But honestly, uh, but yeah, I mean, I am. Um, but I mean, Arlington, I'm still keeping an eye out on. I'm still waiting until the Houston Roughnecks game to finally like, give out like kind of like my overall uh, my overall prediction because I don't even know what to rank the defenders at, at this point. I, I don't. I think I want to move them up today. I like. I'm thinking about moving it up if the if the Showboats keep playing the way they're playing, but uh, just like Kyle Shanahan with the lead in the Super Bowl, twenty eight to three, twenty well, to might- ten. 10 to 0. Yeah, I was about to say, which one? <laughs> There's three. And even in the regular season, there might be like a couple that we just like forgot because it's the regular season. Man, but no, speaking of 28 to 3, the Falcons, I was hoping they were going to beat the Rams that one game. Dude, oh 20. Tw- like yeah, there were 28 to 3. I was waiting. I'm like, Marcus Mariota, like, you better they- be clutch. They would have ended the curse. The curse would have been, would have been broken. It, I don't it, care. This season would have been like eight and nine, but at, at least like with Arthur Smith, I would have been like, "Hey, that's a great way to start." They're not gonna choke anymore. Or at least for the most part, they're not gonna choke as much as as previously because that Falcons team in twenty twenty two, they should have made the playoffs. They honestly should have made the playoffs, but. But my 49ers faithful still believe Shanahan has that same curse. Well, yeah, I, I kind of figured. Even in not even a Super Bowl, NFC Championship game 2023, NFC Championship game 2022, both lost to the blow lead against the Rams and go blow out by Philly. And yes, you can argue, oh, Brock Purdy was the game the Niners could have won. No, the Eagles were 
or something else that season. I'm I'm saying the Eagles still won that game. Um, I I will say this. Um, it reached a point where uh, you talked up um, Arthur Swift so much point where you had him as your coach of the year. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want. Oh, uh, I don't want to talk about that one, bro. That wasn't a bear. Like, like that was like that was like a hot take that just that brother. Uh, that age, like, really. I Arthur Smith kept proving me so wrong. It became a huge <laughs> meme. Like he just just use Bijan Robinson. Oh, use yeah. Teller Algier correctly. Use Kyle Pitts, man. Like that's Nick all Nick you Nick needed. Nick. That's all you needed to do. But each week, each week, it kept getting worse and worse and worse. I was thinking when they brought in uh, Taylor Tyler Taylor Heineke, I was thinking like, okay, there's hope. There's hope. And then there wasn't. Nope. <laughs> I I fought this man as coach of the year because I thought the Falcons were going to go win the what, NFC what? South. Wait, hey. I want what? Case Cookus back. Wait, wait, wait. What happened to him? Did he get banged up or? I, no, I'm pretty sure he got benched. Uh, I'm, well, he got. Oh, yeah, he got. I'm thinking. Bro, yeah, he benched. got done. Well, he if he so got sacked, if he got sacked five times, I don't blame him. So sad, I feel dude. Bad for my boy. No, no, no. If he got sacked five times, I don't blame him. Like you basically killed him out there throughout that whole game, Daniel and you Jones can't got sacked ten times, and the Giants still said I'm packing. Bro was terrified to come out. I know, I know. They didn't want to bring in Tyrod Taylor, but then to be fair, if Tyrod Taylor came into the game that first snap, he would he would have been injured. <laughs> we we all know he was gonna be injured if like Daniel Jones was at least had the dur had some durability. They were like, all right, all right, like, do we trust Daniel Jones to be injured in five plays? Do we trust Tyrod Taylor to be injured in one play? So I mean, I don't blame the Giants for that one. Oh, oh, what a complete pass! Okay, was, I was gonna uh, say something. So the so the funny thing about that game um, is that my then girlfriend, um, I was talking to her parents, sure. and mm -hmm. they yelled at me for dating their daughter to the point where they hated me. So I I enjoyed that game, but on the side, like outside my house, <laughs> my now ex girlfriend's parents scream at me for dating their daughter. So it was a very um, let's just say entertaining day for me. <laughs> oh, it was bad. It was so yeah. bad. But hey, it, like it got even better because she cheated because I found out like oh, two months ago that she cheated on me for a good, for a month and a half. So oh, that shit fucking stung. What a catch! Yeah, second and ten. Well, at least for my, uh, at least for my perspective, second and ten. And I'm seeing like the oh, UFL first stuff first. on Fox underneath the thing. At least I like that, but. You know, I gotta okay, okay. I gotta bring this one guy in to the UFL server. I either I, I just keep forgetting him to DM him. Uh, <laughs> Hang on, it gets way better. So remember, uh, Monday Night Football, uh, Week One home opener, um, Broncos Seahawks. Oh yeah, yeah. My my other girlfriend back then broke up with me that day. It got to the point where like I almost like I almost didn't even watch the game because I was so like distraught. Sad. And then I mean, after that, was, you know, like that was fucking rough. Like I, the thing is, like it was like home opener, Russell Wilson coming back. Like I was dressed up. I had the hat, the jersey. I had like a, I had my coat on, the blue jeans, like the socks, the shoes. I was decked out. I took all that off, and for like most of the game, well, like I, I turned it on like after the first quarter, but like I was so distraught when like I, I didn't give a shit about football. And then I watched the game, and like you know, I just happened to have fun. Yeah, stallion down on the field. Oh. Ah, damn it! We do not oh. root for injuries. The only injury we will, we will ever root for within the league. oh no no he's, no he's he was just saying it. he says stallion down on the field. I don't think he was like yeah. celebrating the injury. No 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 no. Hang on, no. I was just gonna say the only injury I we will ever root for it is if is if it is a Sean Watson just because like, <laughs> just because like, like, I think he's a shit. 
I'm just 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 saying, just saying. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave that alone right there because And cancelled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like is this sounds like you're getting like monetized, but I feel like we're already nope. like just by we're already we're demonetized by pro- we're, we're, already, we're demonetized by proxy, not even like just no just way. existing. Okay, no I know I can know it like Hey Anthony, what's up? Oh wait, hang on. Oh is shoot. This, um, I want to say this is um double doink, right? Like the uh the uh, guy from the guy, guy from the group chat. Yeah, yeah. Bro, dude, he's a straight homie. Uh, uh, he was there when uh during the um the uh fucking um uh honors. What's up, yeah. Anthony? What's good, my brother? So what a man. Yeah, it is. All right, all right. Oh, we got something from uh, 640 right now from Lightning Jr. Hold up. Uh, from James Larson saying, head coach Bob Stoops visibly frustrated during this post-game presser, and it's hard to blame him. Zero turnovers, dominated time possession, uh, posted 419 total yards, and 13 of 18 on third downs. Wow. I mean, yeah, I don't blame him, but at the same time, I feel like it, he should be kind of the reason a little bit too because – Again, you cannot choke a lead like that. Like because the UFL, like what we're seeing, what I like about it, because it's not just about talent, it's not about just having the best guys. It's basically about coaching. Because like think about like Todd Haley, like even I roast him, but it's like like that man had like one of the better teams, but somehow he couldn't do anything with them. Yeah. But I Anthony, mean, like, what's I, up? I mean, like I mean at, at this point, like, you know, you are demonetized. Um I'm just gonna throw this out here right now. I am in a pretty big um, Seahawks fan group chat, and when um, when um, OJ Simpson died, one of the guys um, one of the, one of the guys in the group chat said um, said, and I quote, "Do you think Satan ass raped him yet?" And I'm like, "What the fuck?" And <laughs> that one was laughing so hard. I was as well, but I'm like, "What the fuck?" All right, yeah. Oh, <laughs> sack! But by- oh, another sack. Yeah, that's game at this point. Like by by mid, more sacks and Troy Williams is like no no case cook is no we're equal treatment we're an equal <laughs> we're an equal rights <laughs> we're equal rights everybody equal rights. Who <laughs> wait? There's a flag. Holy on the offense! No way! No way! You get a sack. You get a sack. Everyone gets a sack. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you know, week five, Monday Night Football. They're, like, they're, everybody's they're, getting sacked. Like, they're getting the Russell Wilson treatment. They're getting the Geno Smith treatment. They're getting the Daniel Jones treatment by a mile. They're getting, like, even, like, before even our <laughs> game, the Cowboys, remember, Michael Parsons was just like, oh, yeah, I'm just if I just even step uh, equality, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> We I, stand end, for, I stand for equal we end, rights. Everybody gets a sack. Oh, doesn't <laughs> we end football races? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. You know what? You know what? We got we got to get Nick Bosa in the <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna he's gonna go to the OFL. He's learning about Igor. <laughs> <laughs> it it is in the the uh the uh, ten commandments thou shall let everybody get a sack <laughs> i'm all for it no, no. unless you're tom brady one sack equals 15 yard penalty <laughs> penalty yard penalty brother you're in jail like for like life oh no, no. unless you're no 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 no, no. that's too no 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 i was about I was, I was about to say i was gonna go too far and it, it, yeah i was like i'm, I'm already i'm already I'm, i don't want to get into cancel already. <laughs> at this point brother i i was fine 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 let me let me let me get into can, let me get into cancel right now all right you know you know there was a team back then that was uh that had a great name <laughs> the Washington, the Washington, Washington football team. <laughs> the Washington oh, football the team. Football team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well. That was a great name. They that brought it brought it fed families generations only for like two seasons. Oh, what a dot! 
What a dot! Hang on, hang on. I have to watch this. I have, I have to watch this one now. Kane is... He's feeding families. He's feeding families better than the Detroit Pistons. Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's feeding families better than the Marlins. <laughs> because you know what they have? A free whopper for each Miami Dolph Marlins win. Dude, that defender just like tripped over his He got cooked. He got Eli'd. He got Eli'd. Or specifically appled. He got appled. I'm scared. Almost yeah, picked. Brother. I um what? Um I think I think we're playing what? Like week what seven? Week seven. We're playing week seven. That is the weekend of before my finals. I am I I fortunately I cannot watch that game because you can't? Well well one work. That's the main reason why. But otherwise if that game was like later on, like a night game, I would have probably like, oh, I don't know, I'm tuning in that game. I would have made it a more of a bigger event. I think that that would have been the perfect game to have a uh, group reaction because that that would be a. Uh, well, well um, I I I actually might be streaming that game. It depends if I'm scheduled for work that weekend. But if I'm not, I will most likely be streaming. Mm. But I, I if that if that game was a night game, if they push it to a night game, they I'm should. making this. I'm making this in an event. I'm making it more. We're bring, I know we're only gonna get like four or five viewers watching this game, Woo! which is you know great for you, great for everyone that showed up here. But bro watched his shoe. You see that, my boy, number twenty one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care that behind that shit was funny. There we go. Here we go. Oh, oh. Let's go. Let's... Game. 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 That's game. That's game. I don't know what's going Adrian on. Adrian Martinez is they him. Adrian Martinez okay. is him. We, Martinez is now the guy. He, I, he's the. I'm Alex. Terrified for week for week seven, actually. Alex Magoo. Gave him the powers tonight. He gave him the powers to become him. <laughs> we got but we got vanilla Vic up in here at this point. Dude, well, more Latino Vic. Latino Vic. <laughs> His name is Martinez. He's Latino. <laughs> I'll be right back to him. But but Mar Alex Magoo, that's why he came to this game. He was like Adrian. I'm gonna give you my powers. All right, you better you better carry on this legacy. You better like I since I can't since I'm behind Jordan Love in Green Bay. I gotta I gotta give you my powers. That's what what a fumble in the two point what and well I mean silence couldn't convert but hey thirty three to twelve. That's yeah that's the dagger. Now that's officially the dagger. Um. But I, I'm I'm still waiting till the zeros. I'm still waiting till the zeros. Eight twenty eight left. It is a nineteen eleven. It's a twenty one point okay. twenty one point game. It's it's a three score game either way. Not gonna lie, it would have been funny as hell is um if number sixteen like 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 scored that. I would laugh so fucking hard. <laughs> but. All right, but I gotta see what what game is like. I, I'm able to stream next. I gotta see this. If you do, let me know. Um, probably probably best to do stream labs just because you know it would just be better for me personally. Um, yeah. if if I'm if I'm able to join you, but also on that note, I'm probably gonna head out just so you know I don't get in trouble and you know shit like that. All right. um, yeah. Uh, All right. Throughout the NFL season, I, I'll like I'll be moved out. I'll have my own place, so I yeah. will be able to stop. I'll probably stream a lot more if I'm not if I'm not working or not. Yeah, uh, I'll be streaming. The, I'll be probably streaming the NFL. Um, I might stream the draft here in the next like week and a half if I oh, do. Oh yeah, the draft is coming. Okay, that we could. All right, all right. There's a chance if if it, oh, well, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens because I do have sometimes class on Thursday, so I, so there's a chance or not I may, I may or may not stream the draft. Let's just see what happens. 
Unless if I could you, just do if it. You, if you are, definitely let me know, and I will 100% join you. Just because yeah. I will, because because like I was also planning as well. These, these past few drafts, like um, um, I have just been watching um, Tom Stream. So like you know, yeah. it's something something entertaining. You know, like you know, yeah, you know, Grassy and all that. But, but like, we all need to see it. We all need to see our reactions, especially. Yeah. Because it's funny, it's funny just to see any any fans' reaction to the draft, if especially if it's a bad one. We're like, I, if we see like the uh, like the the Giants get JJ McCarty, then Cam, it's like um, we're all gonna. Cam, um, if you have Discord, let me know. I will definitely add you, and, and we can probably work something out. If not, definitely Twitter or X. You know what people call it nowadays. Yeah. X, um. Maybe, call. maybe we do a Discord call. If anything, that's probably the best I could do. But um, yeah, I, won't be able to, I probably won't be able to. Um. Well, you know, let's see. Like, like the like the biggest thing I can do right now is stream as uh, stream labs, just because I I I like wouldn't be a huge problem, but I can't get streamer on a phone for some stupid reason. But um. Definitely, uh, definitely, uh, stream labs. If, uh, like, if, like, if that works out, everyone, if not, that's, that's probably fine. Yeah. But, well, let's just see. I, I'm just, I gotta still plan out. I gotta plan out everything. Um, otherwise, uh, otherwise, I'm probably just gonna watch the, uh, NFL draft just casually, if anything, because I'm still gonna have, because, uh, because of school or anything, because of school and all that. But I'm trying to look at a game. Uh, week six, it's an early game. Week seven is the stat, a Battle Hawks game I mentioned earlier. Um, week eight, I, uh, I am I am going to be busy. Week eight, I'm going to be busy. Week eight for that one, um, unless, well, I mean, I probably don't have to do a Stallions game, but probably I'll just pick a uh, pick a random game that's uh, just for the funs for the fun of it. Um, oh, well, okay, week ten. Sent you um, a friend request there, Cam. I, oh, 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 week 10. Week 10. Um, if playoff implications are insane, the last game is Roughnecks versus Showboats. That should be a good game. I If playoff implications are on the line, I might stream that game. I, I might stream that game. I might. It's on Sunday, June 2nd. It's a 4 p.m. game, uh, Pacific time specifically. But... I, I may pick that game. I, I may pick that game because, but if not, let me see. Let me see. The conference championship game, they only announced one of the dates, which is going to be on ABC. It sounds like that's probably going to be like the, uh, that's going to be like the, uh, like the, probably like the XFL conference one. That's because usually, you know how like the NFL, you had like CBS representing the a AFC and then Fox is like the NFC. Yeah. So it, it kind of feels like that way because you know how like the XFL had ESPN, ABC, and then the USFL had Fox. So, so that's what I feel like that's what's leading towards to. And Troy Williams with the pass by Darius Victor. Finally, I can see him. And the USFL championship game is on Fox. And that one, I'm I'm gonna say that's probably my guaranteed. I will stream that game. Just let me know, sir. All right, all right, cool, cool, bad, bad, bad. All right, but USFL champ, UFL championship game. I am guaranteed. I am gonna do that one, guaranteed. Because that one, I feel like that one should be more like an event. And honestly, that should be more an. I should do a pre-event too, a a uh, a UFL media day part two, the championship, championship Sunday edition. Because well, if I get tea time reports for that one, if I get uh, lightning for that one, get you, get if Cam wants to come in for that one, go ahead for a UFL media day. Get you know, get these pe get more people in. That that would be epic. I I think that would be fun to watch. See how it goes. Just gotta just gotta talk some more people up. Uh, all right. All right. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna head out on that note. All right. Um, uh, we, uh, we, yeah, we should definitely um, start um, definitely start uh, planning stuff out for the future, especially for the draft, just because I think I think I just, I just think that would that'd be a lot of fun to do. Yeah. Um, I might stream tomorrow for the Battlehawks game. It just depends what I'm doing. 
Um, yeah. It depends what the game is. Um, I know I know I got plans at noon. Um, but if the game's like in the like you know in the afternoon or in the morning, I should be able to stream it. Um, I yeah, I'll just you know let people know obviously. Um, and I and I have, and also make yeah. sure my uh, my uh, stream labs actually work for shit or not. All right, I gotta test out stream labs. I gotta see how probably that works for my laptop. I gotta see. Yeah. That's how it goes. But otherwise, uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining. Oh, 100%. Thank, uh, thank you for having me. This you're was awesome. awesome. Yeah. Uh, this has been a great night so far. Um, I'm hoping yeah. to get more guests in soon. That's kind of one of my bigger 2024 things. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, uh, maybe maybe I'll do maybe more like pre, pre-work pre then. Like, since if I'm able to do the games, then I'll probably just do more of the uh, – I'll just do more uh, – I'll just do more, like just like pre preview shows. Then I'll probably just do more preview shows. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for joining. Have a good night, man. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Mm. Um. See y'all later. I'm gonna enjoy this game. I'm probably just do whatever I want. All right. All right. All right. Yep. All right. Yep. See you again. All right. Good night. See you. Yeah. Have a good night, man. Have a good night. All right, uh, that was Gavin, everybody. You know, if you want to check his in, uh, check his ex Twitter. You know that. Uh, go follow him. But otherwise, uh, otherwise, you know, this has been a great night. I'm, you know, the, we got we got a couple guests. Uh, we got we had tea time reports uh, once again. If if you're watching this or not, you know, thank you again, thank you for coming to the show. Um, you know, glad to be there. You know, um, gl- uh, we're here to promote. Your- each other channels, you know, the goal is to like not only to promote uh spring league uh, content, but you know, promote each other's channels, you know, try to, you know, market each other and try to get more people to, uh, to have some fun. But, you know, I'm glad that we get, you know, glad we had a fun night. Uh, you know, I, you know, it's one thing I was hoping to see in this one, get a Luke Miller sighting that was, uh, enduring these stands, but probably your, he has probably got a sighting or not. I don't know, but, you know what? This has been fun. But uh, how's everybody doing tonight? The other way, like you know, like we're, we're almost done with this game. We're three and a half minutes. Stallions are up by twenty-one. Uh, so this is probably one of the bigger nights. Uh, so you know, we have forty-two to two now. Welcome to thirty-three to twelve. So, and Troy Williams gets sacked once again by Mister Thompson. <laughs> Another sack. All right, all right. We got, we got a. You know, what, you know. What? Since we're, since the Stallions are the only team that are able to revive players' careers, we'll bring in Cleveland Farrell. Why not? We'll bring in. Uh, we'll bring Cleveland Farrell. We'll bring in. Uh, who else? Who else? Uh. Uh. Who's been like kind of that, like that Solomon Thomas, Overian Solomon Thomas? I'm doing good. My Reds want today, not bad. And the Stallions, and the Stallions want tonight. Vibes are high, exactly. The vibes are high. We're doing good, and I, I they are unstoppable. Adrian Martinez is the guy. We, I think we, we may have found our guy. Um, because you know we were for like the past two weeks, it looked iffy, but hey, I, I think. Oh, there's Alex Magoo. We got a Magoo sighting. We got the GOAT. Stolen Thomas needs this league, <laughs> bro. First round of 49ers need to bounce back, bro. I thought that man was gonna be a threat. Like, I mean, he did like do some things as a 49er, but like, bro, wasn't him. The goat is here, exactly, dude. More pop, Alex Magoo, hot take, more popular than Taylor Swift. <laughs> oh. Like I, I think we all can agree is as Alex Magoo is more popular than Taylor Swift. I think we all can agree a hundred percent. 
right in this chat. Just just give me a thumbs up if we all agree that Alex Magoo is more popular than Taylor Swift. But look at that. Look at that banner. That banner. Then we all <laughs> I don't know. I, I I just need to confirm. Just need a thumbs up or something. But fourth and sixteen. Now, this is it. I, I like what do you do there? Like I, I guess you go for fourth. Biggest bust for the Lynch era. I, I mean, yeah. That like that first year that did not Oh pick. That's it. That's it. Game over. Game over. Game over. Game over, buddy. This has been a good night. That that banner is, yeah, that banner looks nice. It that those those two years, 2022 and 2023. You just see those two years. It shows the greatness. And we basically just show tonight the Stallions that they are the best Greenland football team. We we showed everybody tonight on Champions Night. So I wonder if uh, Matt Corral does come into this game just to be like a, like, oh, yeah, just, just uh, handle the ball. No, nope, the Adrian Martinez is there. Oh, 23. Oh, Ricky Person Jr. with the gain, and it looks like maybe a first down. Game is over, and this one belongs to the Salians. Uh, I'll wait. I'll, I'm now back. I have the means ready for today. You got the memes, everybody. We got memes. Let's go. Let's go. Check his content out on TikTok. Great, great content right there. But this Adrian Martinez, it could be him. I, I think it's a I think it might be official. He is him. Matt Corral's going to hand off the, the balls for the rest of the game. Let's just see. But just need the two other two games. Yes, we'll see what happens tomorrow. For tomorrow, if anyone uh, needs to remember what games there are, so tomorrow we have the, the uh, we have uh, tomorrow's games. We have uh, I keep forgetting. Um, I know Panthers, but I keep forgetting the time. That's uh, that's what I'm looking at. Uh, yeah, tomorrow at 9 a.m. Pacific or uh, 12, 8, 12 p.m. Eastern, we have the Roughnecks going against the Panthers. Uh, we'll see how that one goes. And then uh, we have the Battlehawks versus the uh, – at 12 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, we got the Battlehawks going against the Brahmas. Uh, so – I, I, we have some pretty exciting games. I'm going to go Michigan, and I'm going to go San Antonio. San Antonio has been pretty much I've been burnt. Uh, San Antonio pretty much has been proving me wrong the past two weeks. So we'll see how that one goes. Uh, big test for the Bell Hawks. Uh, big test for the Bell Hawks the next, tomorrow. So I mean for both teams. So if if San Antonio wins, they might be the they might be the team to to be in the XFL conference. So. Uh, if St. Louis wins, you know, if it's a close game against San Antonio, then San Antonio is going to be a, then San Antonio is going to be a uh, team that's going to, that's going to be uh, fighting for that playoff spot. So they're, so watch out. Uh, then, then uh, we have then going to the Roughnecks game. We have you know Roughnecks. They're trying to get the first win. They lose then. Them and Arlington are going to be fighting for uh, their first win next week, uh, week four, uh, Renegades versus uh, Roughnecks at Houston. So we'll see how that one goes. And then the Panthers, you know, they're uh, they're one and one. You know, they want they could they could be like zero oh, and two. Basic, they could be also be zero oh, and two if it wasn't for Jake Bates being the uh, the hero that he is. So so we'll see what happens. But I'm saying in Michigan at Ford Field, I'm I'm picking the I'm picking the Panthers. <clears throat> 33 to 12 first and 11 yeah Adrian Martinez is still under center and 
an angle. Why is Martinez still in? I, I I guess just put him for a full game. I, I don't know at this point. Oh, oh, like last year. We gave the Memphis Showboys last year. Dude, back to back years. Back to back years. <laughs> Dude. We're legit. We gave him pity points. We we just gave him pity points. There's no way. We just gave him pity points. Dude, if I had a nickel every time we gave the Memphis Showboats a safety at Birmingham in a blowout game, I would have two nickels. It's not much, but it's weird it happened twice. Now we got a ball game. <laughs> now we got a ball game. Yeah, let's, let's see them make that 19-point comeback. <laughs> Send it to you. All right, all right, but but I gotta see this self promotion on. Um, oh, it's on. It's on. It's on. It's in. It's, on, it's in the text. Okay, yeah, yeah. Hold up. This word, I, I bet, 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 bet. Oh, one minute and eight seconds left. One minute. They're just, they're just wasting clock. They like, even the showboats are just like, we're just going to do whatever we can. Um, but a minute seven. Awesome. And boom, another deflect. Second and ten. Could have been a pick, but hey, it is what it is. But I got to think about how am I going to do the draft this season. I, I, I might because we want to – I want to see reactions. I want to see, like, like the thoughts. Like, we're going to see – we're going to see what we want to see. I just – Cannot wait for the draft. I keep forgetting it's like in about a couple weeks. Troy Williams with the pass to number four. It just looks like it, it's just it's just at this point. It's we're just trying to wait. Did the report say say that the coach didn't want to talk to report on the sideline after every touchdown? I don't know.
Bruh. And another pass completed. At this point, it, there's not really any reason to this. It's just, even if they do fourth and 12, I at this point, we're, we're good. We're good. So, it's a random guy. Yeah, what's up? Next week. Just call the white flags. Agreed. Uh, I, I might I might join a little bit. I'll, I'm thinking about it. I'll, I'll see what maybe I'll, I'll talk. I'll see what I can do. But uh, I mean, I'm gonna be working early in the morning, so I just uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens overall. I just wanna just uh, just will. I, I'm definitely if anything, I'll try. I'll try to join if anything. Uh, most maybe. I'll try to join the video if anything. Uh, I'm talking about sounds. Oh, oh, that game. Oh, so uh, how about the how the uh, defenders looking like uh, again? I I think Jordan Tiam is gonna do against uh you know uh Tarl Charlton Carl uh Carlos Davis. You know the entire Sounds defense specifically. Oh. I I just want to know. Do you think Jordan Tiamu is gonna survive? Like I I just feel like. You know, we saw Case Cookus. We saw what what happened to him today. Uh, so, I, I I feel like we're going to struggle. Yeah, I I, I don't think we're going to give up twenty eight to ten leads, uh, twenty eight to eighteen leads. So, and you're playing at Birmingham too. Tiam is going to be like Cookus, bro. EJ Perry got cooked last week. Even. I think at least for us. At a small bit. But first and goal for the Memphis Showboats. This is just garbage time touchdowns. Yeah, he is going to get cooked right out of the stadium. And we have placed Jordan Diamond before in the USFL as a mandate, remember? And we should be 0-3. Honestly, yeah. I mean, Panthers should be 0-3. The Renegade should honestly should have been two and one at this point, but no. Uh, Ballhawks could have been 0 and two. I mean, like Memphis should be two and no. This should have been a game of the Battle of Undefeateds, but you know, they choked that game. Brahmas, we'll see how they go next week. Renegades are just so funny, dude. It's the Dallas Cowboys like thing, it's just the Dallas Cowboys disease. That's what it is. If you're affiliated with the Cowboys, you're just around the vicinity of the Cowboys. That's just that's just how it is. They have such trolls in their families. And honestly, at least we showed that we're the real champions. And tonight we have showed that we are the real champions. Even though it's like we're seeing this like them trying to make a garbage type touchdown. Uh, oh, there it is. They scored a touchdown, you guys. They they finally scored a touchdown. Titus Sweden. Or Titus Sween or Swen. But they got a touchdown, everybody. Wait, game's over. Oh, they... Oh, they didn't even, like... What? Wow. Showboats. What was that? But 10 consecutive wins for the Birmingham Stallions. That is something you got to be impressed about. We're now 3 and 0 in the UFL everybody. 3 and 0. So, Adrian Martinez is him, everybody. Ah, so there you have it. The bro couldn't even score a touchdown. They only scored one touchdown, and then they scored a safety, and then two field goals after that. The corral, the Golden Corral I meme will live on. But for now, Adrian Martinez, let's give him props.
Let's get him props, everybody. Let's cap. Let's clap. The showboats are like the Jets. They can't have anything good in football. Let's give let's give Adrian Martinez a round of applause, everybody. At least give him come some claps. He did it. It, it was rough in the beginning. Yes, we all have to admit it was rough, but he got better. He got better along, and we actually stayed with one QB in the in the making. So, so this what this is a very good game. This was a better way, better than last week for sure, where we couldn't like do anything in the red zone. So, I, I, I'm I'm happy about this win. I feel confident about this win. We're gonna go. Hopefully, this should build up. Hopefully, Adrian Martinez remains as QB one. Or at least, like, hopefully we have some consistency at the QB position. So, I'm um, I'm hoping this is a this is a this is a good start we have. But you know, once again, thank you for all for coming. Uh, this has been a really good night. You know, this is you know a good night. I know for some of you guys, it's probably like 10 p.m. Uh, out here, but otherwise, you know, this is this has been great. The great game. We enjoyed it. This has been fun. Uh, Hopefully we can do this another time. I'm, um, I'm thinking we probably, uh, I'm thinking about the NFL draft. If not, then maybe another UFL game. Or if not, I'll probably do even preview, pregame work. I'll, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make this channel grow big, not just in YouTube, but I mainly do TikToks. Yes. Uh, so yeah, thank, uh, thank for all for coming. But, uh, but. Let, let's just see what happens. That I'm, yeah, definitely. I just really want to see what happens going forward. I just, I, I was glad to get tea time reports here. Uh, you know, like he, they, they do great work there, and I was like, hope I'm thinking like, all right, I feel like this is a good first, like kind of second guest since Lightning Junior was the first guest here. Uh, I'm thinking about maybe I bring more people in. Maybe I bring in just not only just uh, UFL content creators. Uh, maybe we bring in just like, you know, fans in general, like, you know, of the game, not like main fans of the team, fans of anything. So let me know what happened. I'll, I'll see what I can do. But otherwise, it's been a great night. I uh, appreciate y'all for coming. Adrian Martinez is the GOAT for this game. Uh, but, you know, good night, everybody. Have a safe night. Have a safe day tomorrow. Let's walk. We're going to have more UFL content. But Uf UFL time, uh, just. Look me up on, on TikTok, X, whatever. All right. Good night.